Welcome back, everybody. It's been a little bit. I haven't seen you guys in quite a minute. Hope everybody is having a lovely, beautiful Friday. Um, I'm excited to see you guys again. I was traveling for a little bit and I was dealing with some issues and then I got sick. And now, guess what? I'm not sick, which means it is time to cook. Um, hope everybody is having a lovely, beautiful day today. Um, I'm excited. It's gonna be a good time today. I see we have Dosky, I see we have uh, Dagem, I see we have Lego Batman fan. Hello, hello, hello. It's good to see you all. Hello, Lana. It's lovely to see you. I do actually, let me appoint you as a mod. Slash mod, right? Linux 420. Lana is one of my official mods. That's right. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Have you guys seen the Twitter announcement that we went with? It's great. It's excellent. It's amazing, in fact. Quite happy about it. You will do your best. Thank you. You also don't, you're not obligated to stay unless you absolutely have to. It's lovely to see you. I'm very happy to see you. So, my friends, I'm quite excited for today's stream. We'll just wait for people to still pile on in. We'll be doing a little bit of chicken adobo, uh, which I'm actually quite excited about because the dish that I love eating, it is also a dish that I have not made. This is a dish that I've not made before. I also don't necessarily make Filipino food. I think I've never actually properly made Filipino food. And it's not as though my other dishes are traditional Filipino accompaniments. Also, hello, hello, hello. Hello, is that my little Luke champ? Um, yeah, so uh, I've never had a chance. Oh, adobo punk, whoa, look at that, how fitting. Um, I've never had a chance to cook Filipino food. It was always something that I felt like my kitchen was never stocked for. Right, because I'm a very big use what you have in your pantry and then see what is like the closest fit. But I wanted to try some new things today. Um, I, you know, want to expand my horizon, so to speak. When I got myself some, you know, pretty classic Filipino soy sauce, the Silver Swan brand. And then I also got myself some of the classic, you know, traditional Filipino uh, cane vinegar as well. Um, and I feel like in this case, it's kind of important not to sub in any other kind of vinegar or soy sauce because it might not just give you the taste and intensity that you're looking for. I'm back from last stream to say low IQ stuff. What do you mean? Not sure what you're saying. Um, so I'm quite excited about it. Um, and then I have two whole chickens that we're gonna have to break down. And what really interests me about adobo, the part that I'm kind of confused about, it has an egregious amount of vinegar in it. It is like a one-to-one -one ratio of like a cup of soy sauce to like a cup of vinegar. And it does not make any sense to me how this sauce will not come out being completely acidic. Um, and I am curious what will happen because it kind of breaks a lot of conventions for me. So, um, I don't know, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be interesting for us to talk about that. Also, I have two whole chickens. Now, I might have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew than usual. And the reason I say that is because I didn't know that I would be getting completely whole chickens when I got them. They were wrapped up in plastic at the store. I picked them out, I got them, I brought them home, and then I was met with a funny little surprise. I did not know until I got home. This is actually maybe one of my first times actually working with a proper whole chicken. My friends, I would like you all to look at this, please. This is what I have today. I have two of these bad boys. Yeah, get a lot of this guy, he's not having a good day. So we'll have to figure out what to do with him. We'll have to figure out how to take off the neck. I've never actually de-necked a chicken before and I have a second one right here. That is indeed a whole animal. I was not expecting a whole, whole animal today, but we'll figure it out. He's not having a good time, is he? So we'll have to figure out a way to get rid of the head. And then I'm not going to make a stock from the head. I'm gonna throw the head away probably. I'm gonna keep the neck, of course, and the neck bones. Um, and the bones as I usually do to then later make a stock. So I just wanted to take a second to show off what we have today because this is also a little bit new for me. It's not gonna be that difficult. I'm sure we just go along like the neck bones and then we can slice it off to get the neck off, but it's just gonna be, it's gonna be new. It's gonna be new for me. So I'm pretty excited to get into it. Um, and, and the chicken is mostly gutted. It doesn't have like its innards and stuff. It does have like the liver um, and some kidneys inside as well. So um, nothing, nothing too crazy in that regard. Okay, I gotta put this away to the side for the moment. And let's just get my station set up. As we get into this, I'm quite excited about it. 
Got to move some stuff around. I didn't prepare as much as I could have for this, but that's okay. That's fine. That is not an issue. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit new. I'm excited. Okay. Chicken's coming out. Also, by the way, once again, guys, my apologies for how long it's been since I streamed. I did not want to take a little hiatus. I just kind of had stuff pile up at once for me. I once learned how to dress pal and poultry and Boy Scouts. Well, there you go. And now you have your Twitch. That's so funny. You learn how to dress and, and, and properly debone a chicken in Boy Scouts. And now your username is Princess Anna 97 That shit's really funny. Also, hello, Anna. It's lovely to see you. Hope you're doing good. Okay, let's get my hair out of the way. Let's tie that bad boy up. And by that, I mean my hair. That's the bad boy in this case. It's time, my friends, for us to debone the chicken. So the idea is also this. We're going to salt it in advance like we usually do. Um, but we're not going to get too crazy with the amount of salt that we're actually using because this is going to have an entire cup of soy sauce going into it itself. This is my first time doing adobo. I'm going to be a little bit conservative on my salt usage because I don't want to get an inedibly salty mess. So little light seasoning as it's going to brine is going to be nice for us, I believe. Okay. And usually I do my own like recipes for things. Right? Usually it's like things that I've invented and created. Um, and in this case, this is something where I am basically trusting somebody else entirely for it. So that's just going to be interesting for us to do here. I am not going to be using the breasts for this recipe. The breasts are going to be used another time. Uh, I'm going to be using the legs and I will be deciding if I want to use the wings, depending on how much leg we have. Also, hello, Gino dude. It's lovely, lovely to see you. Okay. Let's get into this. Very excited to see the chicken prep. Well, you'll see in just a moment's time, wouldn't you? Let me just make sure my tweet announcement came out okay. Where is my phone? Oh my God, did I just lose it? Am I going insane? Actually, I might be. I have no idea where I put my phone. Oh, I put it right here. Okay, I was looking at it the whole time. Okay, lovely. So, my friends, let's get started with the prep. We're gonna take one of these bad boys right off, uh, right out of the gate here. He's kind of leaning over the cutting board. He's not having a good day, is he? Well, let's give him an even worse day. So I think the first thing that we should do, we should try and cut off this knuckle joint right here. I don't actually know where it entirely breaks is my only issue. I guess this is gonna give us like a little sneak peek. Again, I haven't watched a video on how to do this from, from this point. I only know it like the traditional like Western way it comes in a supermarket, which is, um, you know, the, the, the feet are removed and, and the head is removed and usually most of the innards are also removed, right? So in this case, right, it's actually quite simple. I see that we can just actually slice on through because there's like almost an incision that's already been made for us, but then it's on the other side as well. That is interesting. There's like a bone that is extending all the way here. And I just gotta find a way to slice through it. Huh, look at that. Okay, we got one of the feet off. It's just gonna make this whole thing a little bit more manageable for us. In fact, I might have been able to slice further down is what I am understanding actually, because there's like a little bit of a joint left here. No, not quite. Yeah, this is new for me. Perhaps through this point in the book. Maybe we'll go into the fine tuning stuff a little bit later. Not right now. That's not my concern at the moment. Let's see. We got to pop open the joint from this point. And then it should just come off nice and easy. Yeah, there we go. We got it the whole thing this time. Right? We got the whole foot off. So what I am understanding is we need to angle it once we go inside. We get inside of the joint and then we just simply angle it. But I'm not gonna do that now because it's gonna be a little bit slippery. Right now what I'm gonna focus on is just removing the leg. So, same theory as usual, my friends. Um, all we're going to do, we're going to make an incision as close to the leg meat as possible to split the skin. This looks like a really nice chicken, I can't lie. It's actually really nice and fatty. It's got like the yellow fat too. Um, wow, I should get chicken from here a little bit more often. Quite nice, okay. And then we're just going to continue to make incisions here. We don't want to go too deep into the breast skin. 
flip it over. Maybe I should have dealt. Let's deal with the head because I just have this big appendage that's just kind of hanging around at the moment that is making it quite difficult for me to do anything with my little chicken friend here. But I feel like there should be a vertebrae for me to snap through and there isn't at the moment. Guys, I'm figuring this out at the moment as well. This is, this is interesting. Is there no like, is there no place that I can just go through the neck bone? I don't know if I have any butchers in chat, but this is where I could actually really use the advice of one. No, it, no, I, I seem to have separated it. Okay, I can separate it just fine. And now we can proceed with the regular butcher, right? Which is we go here, we pop up the leg socket, and then we go all the way along the meat, right here, just like this. And it comes right off, perfect. And that's how we get the leg and thigh off. The legs are always the easiest and the most fun part to take off. Okay, that's one. Let's flip this bad boy around. Let's do the same on this side. And again, once again, you wanna cut as close to the leg itself because you wanna keep as much of the breast skin intact as possible. So, we flip it over, we keep going, we keep going, we'll pop this bad boy up. And this is, so, this specific chicken, I will say is a little bit unique for me because this is kind of longer and flatter. Like, every single cut of meat here is a little smaller than I'm used to seeing. I wonder what it is about the variety of it that is it like that? And I know the specific variety of the chicken or anything that I'm working with. Okay, we got the second leg off. We're going to wait to split it in two because that's the most fun part for me. That's a really pretty looking bird. It is, isn't it? This isn't like your traditional chicken proportions. Look at how much the breastbone is jutting out. Right? I feel like this is the one that you would, um, so I got this from a Chinese store, my Chinese grocery store. I feel like this is closer to like the kind of like um, pretty like trad, uh, Chinese like roast chickens that you'd usually see hanging. Not the ducks, but like the, the chickens themselves. And that is what this is kind of reminding me of at the moment, which is, I think, pretty fascinating. Um, but okay, so these are the two big fat pockets. Once again, Western supermarkets usually just kind of remove them. I think these are really nice to have if you're gonna be making your own chicken fat. In fact, there is so much of it that I might actually go out of my way and keep some of this for myself. This is pretty cool. I might just be getting whole chickens from here more often, depending on how this comes out. This is pretty exciting. So, wings, all we're gonna do, we're gonna go around in a circle. That's what I like doing for wings. Until we see the wing bone, right? We can see the joint in there. And then we're just gonna pop it out. Slide the knife, pop it out, and we got one wing off. Then we're gonna do the same thing to this side. Squirt it all the way around. See where the joint's gonna pop out from. Right, that's gonna be the joint right there. And then we just go through it, and it's gonna be nice and easy. And it does most of the work for us, just like that. Beautiful. Okay, now we have the rest of this. We have the rest of the breast. I do not need the breast bone. I don't need the breast, excuse me, the breast meat at the moment. I might actually just set this aside and debone it later because I'd actually like to get started with the adobo. Or maybe I should just go through the effort now and not be a little baby about it. These proportions are really strange to me because this breast is a lot taller than I'm used to. I'm used to a lot wider, a lot fatter. This looks a lot leaner in a way by comparison. Big fat pockets, but, but, but just super thin meat. So I'm curious to see how that's actually going to affect this little process that we have here. So I suppose we just start as usual, right? You go, ooh, it's slippery and hard to get like a good hold. We're going to go on either side of this thing. Either side of the breastbone. And then make a little incision in here as well. And then what I like to do, as I once saw in a video, is we can actually just go through, separate, right, the tenderloin from the breast itself, from the rest of it. It opens up like a little pocket just like that. Although, it's completely separating here. Run your finger along it, separate the two muscles. And then you should be able to just kind of peel this meat off, even without a knife, if you did it correctly. The breast 
should be able to come off and take all of it with it, right? It just slides off the bone. Perfect. Just like that. Rip it off, rip it off, rip it off. Maybe this is where we get a little bit of assistance from the knife. And now it just kind of peels off from here on out. Come on, big boy. You got this. Yeah, there you go. Breast. And once again, that's a pretty thin breast. Yeah, this is indeed as I thought. It's a big chicken, but it's fairly bony. And uh, this is the entirety of the size of breast. Look, this is down to the bone. There is no more meat left from the breast besides the tenderloin itself, which we're going to take out now. We're just gonna run our finger along it. I saw a yakitori chef debone his chicken like this. And this way, you're not scraping your knife against bone, right? You're getting as much of the meat out as possible and you're getting like a whole tenderloin nice and preserved. But I will say, this is a really, really small breast. Lana, you had to take it that way, didn't you? Of course you did. Okay, that was pretty cool. And I'm getting a little bit better at this thing too. This is actually maybe one of the most intact uh, chickens that I've deboned and I've saved the most amount of breast meat. The meat actually just peeled off, but this is a comically small breast. No, no, it's, it's thin. This breast is really, really thin. This is a lot thinner than I'm used to. I'm used to big, fat, you know, chicken breasts. It's long, but it's thin is the thing, which I think is quite interesting. So once again, we're just gonna score right along the side. We're gonna make an incision at the skin, flip it around, do the same exact thing. So just go along this way and then make an L-shaped cut over here and then if we did it right, we can theoretically just peel this bad boy open. And guess what? I believe we did it right. You see how this peels open? This is the tenderloin. Once again, that's running along this side. And then all we're looking to do, we're looking to peel off the rest of the breast meat. Take your thumb, we're gonna poke that through, get the rest of that. Maybe this is where the knife comes in handy. Also, thank you so much for the prime sub, future gay parent. Thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, and now that we've done that, we could probably, oop, there's a little bit of breastbone, a little bit of the ribcage. We can just take the whole thing. Come on. Actually, no, I need to make an incision back here, don't I? To just get the rest of that off. Okay, this one's a little bit more massacred, but that's fine. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I feel like my fingers are doing a better job at separating the meat from the bone than the knife is. Cause you actually, it, it doesn't even need to be like sliced at all. You're just kind of scraping under it, right? And then it wants to come off, is what I would say. This one got torn up a little bit as well. I think I rushed it compared to the last one. But all in all, I think I did a pretty good job. This is the most amount left. Uh, um, yeah, and I don't, I don't like having the tenderloin and the breast in the same piece. Anyways, because they just cook differently. They actually just cook at different times. Okay, that's gonna go in the bowl for now. Let's deal with this chicken now, shall we? So, once again, we gotta remove this little neck, I suppose. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do, because I don't know where the vertebrae of the neck is, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to score the outside of the meat just like this until I find the natural breaking point for the neck. That might just be a better way to do this thing. Oh, this one doesn't want to come out. Never mind, we got it out. Beautiful. Now let's get the feet off this time. This time we're gonna do it a little bit differently, right, compared to last time. Oh, I actually broke it in the wrong place. That was a little brutal, wasn't it? Um, where is it bending? It's bending at this joint again, isn't it? I'm slicing against bone and I don't know why. Here, okay, now I have an axis to it. That's my axis point. We're gonna go around the joint, just like this, break it open. And again, it's doing the thing. Hmm. There we go. That's it, got the foot off. Next foot. Hi, Umbra. Hello, 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 it's lovely to see you. Or should I call you by your name? I don't know if your name is public. 
Is it public? I have no clue. I just want to protect you. Privacy. If needed. God, I hate calling people who I know by their names the gamer tags. It's the worst. It's a very unpleasant thing. My name is always preferred. All right. Well, hello, Hubs. It's happy. To, it's good to see you. Okay. So, get those feet off. Those hair in my face, and my hands are covered in chicken. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Ugh. Okay, never mind. We did it. So, once again, back to the legs, everybody. Oh, shit. I need to remove the tag from um, this wing here. There's a little tag. Boop. Let's get the spread. That's right. You can call me on Brun set if you want. I don't know if I'll do that. Okay. Once again, guys, so you want to cut as close to the leg as possible because you want to preserve as much of that skin through the breast. Even if you cut into the thigh a little bit, it'll be okay, I promise. So just like this, right? We're not cutting here, we're cutting all the way back here. So you know, this video that I watched on like how a yakitori chef like cuts and debones his chicken has been the only one that I've used since because it's actually just that good of a video. Okay, and now, all of this should just pop out. Beautiful. One leg out. <sighs> Guys, this sucks. Help. Uh, this is actually just a cow lick, isn't it? This is what cows have to go through when they have a little thing in their face. Uh, uh, help. Uh, I'm suffering. I tied up my hair, but it was... This sucks. You know what? I'm taking off my glove and putting on another one. Yes, I've wasted a glove, but it's okay. Sous chef extrude. Uh, I'll just have somebody who wants to come over and adjust my hair whenever I need it. And then if I say that, everybody in chat's gonna go, ooh, me, 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 do I'm I would love for that to be me. Need a sous chef. Okay. Lovely. And once again, it's a little bit easier to debone things when you're not wearing gloves, but I'm doing this so I don't have to wash my hands after. It just makes my life that much easier. Okay, lovely stuff. Now, oh buddy, they barely got this weird uh, like feather part out, didn't they? I'm gonna have to deal with that later. Okay, at the moment though, we go in here yet again, pop this open. As per usual, Snap that joint. We do another thing. You know how it goes already. This is a more tough chicken than I'm used to dealing with because usually the chickens, the, the joints would just snap just like, like that easily whenever I put any amount of pressure on. And this one, I'm actually kind of working against it a little tiny bit. And I'm putting the pressure in the right places. So this has been a fascinating learning experience for me. Okay, next chicken leg off. You got, you're the obvious choice for the job? Yeah, it's not that long of a trip. You wanna get here, you might be able to get here in time. Okay, next. Once again, we're gonna go into the wing. We're gonna look through the joint. We're gonna go around the joint, and then in one fell swoop, we'll take it off. Isn't that awesome? You'll feel so cool when you do it. Just start from the back of the bird like this, right? Go around, look through the joint. You didn't go deep enough, that's fine. And I've lost it. Where is it? Come on, big boy. I want to see you. Where'd you go? Ah, there she is. Is what I would say. Where is she? There she is. This one is not as smooth. This one was not as much of a fell swoop as the last one was, but that's okay. I should have cut deeper. Next wing, off. Now, the very last bit of breast that we have to deal with. I don't love how tall this chicken is because it is sliding around the cutting board because of it. I should have just taken out the backbone before, but it's too late now. Okay, once again, we're just making an incision. We're not cutting all the way through. Go back around to the other side now. And in this way as well. And then if we go in here, we're just able to once again See where the tenderloin begins, see where the breast ends, separate the two muscles. Ah, 
and then we'll just be able to pull this whole thing off <gasps> is what i would say we lost a little bit of meat on the way no that's fine it's not a huge deal separate the tenderloin yet again let's get this bad boy off okay separated is it going to come off in one clean piece now i believe so oh i fucked up oh i left like half of it i didn't separate half of it and it tore into two pieces guys i have really got to get better at this thing don't i i've deboned a lot of chickens and clearly i haven't deboned enough if i'm still messing up this much this isn't meant as like a you know self-deprecation but that was just a critique of self just now is what happened because it is quite fairly inexcusable at this point for me to struggle this much with this process okay once again let's peel this thing off i gotta do a better job peeling it off hmm at this point it's a little difficult to see where the breast begins and ends and where the tenderloin begins and ends. But I think I got a handle of it now. Please don't insult my perfect knot. I'm allowed to critique myself, Lana. That is totally allowed. That's more than okay, I think. Okay. Now let's just get in there. Let's rip this off. Lovely. Ah, I didn't cut off the skin. Okay, nice. Next breast off. Now let's get this very last tenderloin without tearing it apart. That's gonna be the goal here. Get in there once again. Is this gonna be it? Is this gonna be the final thing that I need to do? And then we can actually just separate the pieces that we need? I believe so. Yes, it is. We got a perfect tenderloin this time. Okay, everybody, we have now officially deboned two whole chickens. That took quite a bit of time, didn't it? That was like, holy shit, we've been at this for a while. Wow, okay. That was like 20 minutes of just doing that one thing. So here's the deal. We have all of these different parts. We have wings, we have legs, and we have breasts and we have tender loins. We do not need the breasts and tender loins for today. Those I will move on over to a different plate in a moment's time. So that's the breasts, that's tender loin, that's tender loin, that's breast, that's tender loin. Let's see, that's also breast, that's the rest of the tender loin. I believe that should be it. Okay, great. All of this is gonna be used for something else in the future. I have a plate behind me that I've dedicated for this exact purpose. And now we can focus on the fun stuff. So first off, we gotta get our wing tips. So the wing tips, this is going to be used for stock. And I think I'm going to keep the wings for today's adobo. That's what I'm thinking at the moment. Break it, snap the joint, cut it up, get the wing off, great. And then we'll just be keeping this whole thing intact, drum and flat together. Now, once again, don't worry about where the joint begins and ends. If it's a leg and if it's a thigh, the best rule of advice I always give, look at this line, you see this line? You see this line right here, this fat line? Just follow straight down and it will never do you wrong. That's it, that's all it takes. And then you get your separated leg and your separated thigh every single time. Don't worry about the joint, don't worry about where it meets or anything. That is when the skin allows you to expose the flesh. That fat line is what you're looking for, okay? Now, in this case, I gotta figure out what it is. All right, cool, we popped it open. Awesome, awesome. Now we just get in there and we cut off the tip. Just like, no, I was gonna make a stupid joke. I've already done, I think I might have made that joke every single time that I've cut off a wing tip. Every single time that I've done that. Okay, that's the wing. The wings are the least fun part, so we'll get rid of all those right now. Hmm, it's a little bit easier to snap it when it's, the incisions already been made in a way. Yeah, if I like snap it like that, then I get to see where it actually breaks. Ah, I just cut through bone. That's not good for my knife, is it? Not at all is the answer. And I have one last one left. Incision, take it, snap it in half. That's where it breaks. That's exactly where we'll slice down. Okay. We have all of our wingtips taken off. Next, chicken legs. The most fun part, the most satisfying part, the easiest part. Go here, go down, every single time. Nice and easy. Bam. Then, next chicken leg. Go down here, go down the fat line. Bam. Just like that. 
And last one. Perfect. Everybody, guess what? We did it. We have now successfully deboned an entire two chickens. We have all of these legs, thighs, drums. In fact, I might not even use the wings for this because I just kind of like the legs and thighs that much in adobo. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is a lot of meat, isn't it? This is two chickens worth of legs and thighs and wings. I might, I'm heavily considering just putting away the wings for something else. So then I'll just have all of this. Hmm. That's what I'm leaning towards at the moment. But what will I use those wings for? What will I do with them? I do have a sheet tray now, meaning I can do like some bake, like uh, buffalo wings. If I do like the baking soda thing, that might not be a bad idea. That might be kind of fun. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Adobo is only going to be with the legs and thighs. I'm going to use the wings for something else later on that I don't know what it's going to be yet. So time will be the best friend in this case. So let's get my gloves off. Actually, I'm just going to pile that onto this plate first. And I'm going to put all of that into the fridge so we can just get it out of sight and out of mind. Can't wait. We did it, guys. We did it. Once again, this is our nice little tray of uh, chicken legs and thighs, and we're going to generously season the whole thing with salt. We're gonna season all of it with salt, not generously, pretty conservatively is what I was trying to say because of the fact that uh, we're gonna have a lot of soy sauce in this. And so I don't want it to be too salty. I just switched to three different cameras. Whew, I got a little stressed out for a second. That was kind of new for me, but everything is fine, actually. Everything is actually just kind of okay. Lovely. And I'm going to keep that at room temperature because we'll be cooking it soon enough. So we don't have to worry about leaving it out. Everything else is going to go back into the fridge though, which I'm going to deal with now. I'm going to grab this bowl of other parts that I'm going to have to sort through. Okay. That was a lot of chicken, I can't lie. But we're going to get a really tasty adobo. This is my understanding, this is my belief at the moment. Okay, let's get this out of here. Let's get my knife out of business for the moment. We're gonna go ahead and wash that up in a moment's time. I'm gonna put that on a plate actually so it just doesn't sit on my kitchen counter. Let's get this out of the way before the meat dries up on it. I'm just going to do myself a favor and just get off some of the big pieces. Okay, sweet. Uh, and into the dishwasher she goes. And I will quickly clean up my knife because it's just sitting here in chicken. So it might be nice for us to do that. Nice little rinse off, scrub it, little soap. have washed off my knife. Hello, hi, how we doing? It's good to see you guys. Missed you guys so much. It's good to be back. We don't have that many things to do again. This is actually a pretty simple dish, all things considered. And adobo actually just consists of the chicken and it's gonna cook with a bunch of garlic and bay leaves and black pepper. There's no other vegetables in it even necessarily, right? I was, I, it is to my understanding that there's like quite a few variations, but adobo is a really simple dish, fundamentally speaking. So, get some water, have a little sip skis. Ooh. And now, we need to deal with the chicken part too. Well, all we need to do now, we just have to blot this thing off with some paper towels. I'm gonna grab some tongs to do that, because it'll just make my life easier. Blah, 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 blah. And they're really pretty dry because I did the thing that I always do, right? I take a chicken, I put it on a sheet tray, and I air dry it before I work with it. Because there's nothing more unpleasant than butchering like a wet chicken fresh out of the supermarket. It is one of the most unpleasant things on this earth. So I will never ever advocate for that. Okay. 
Chicken has been now officially patted dry. And now it is time for us to hit it with a good amount of salt. Not a good amount. I'm so used to saying that. This is the one time that we're not doing a good amount of salt. So little salt, little salt. Because once again, this is the salt that's going to brine the chicken. So it's going to penetrate it quite a bit. You don't want to over salt it at this stage. Okay, that's one. And give it all a nice little flip. Just a little bit of salt. Sweet, and that's all been done. That's it. That's all the seasoning we need to do for the chicken at the moment. All the seasoning is gonna come from the soy sauce and the vinegar and the sugar. That's what chicken adobo is fundamentally. There's no like myriad of spices that goes in or anything. Um, it's a fairly simple dish. It's a fairly simple dish. So this, I'm now going to officially set aside until we need it. And now, let's get going with our live, shall we? Great. Boop. So, what do we need to do? I need to get the mixture that I'll be doing for the adobo, which I'm doing, I believe, this is one of the only parts that you'll ever actually see um, me use like a measuring cup because it is to my understanding that I'm going to need like a cup of soy sauce to like a cup of vinegar. This is not one of the times that I'll be messing around with the proportions too much. And that's because when I'm dealing with so much salt and I'm dealing with so much acidity, I do not know how to control that fully in a recipe that I've not actually done before. So that is why I'm a little hesitant to do it, but I will have to actually measure things out. Okay, let's do that in the meantime. Got the cutting board nice and ready to go now. We'll just pop it all in this bowl. I have some of my soy sauce right here. This is the only application that I'll need the soy sauce for. Ugh, I hate, I hate measuring things when I'm cooking. It is, it is not pleasant, trust me. And again, this seems like an egregious amount of soy sauce. This seems like, oh my God, we're using a cup of fucking soy sauce. And guess what? We are using a cup of soy sauce. So I really do not know why this works this way. Chicken adobo has always been like one of those dishes that has confused me for this very reason. I have never understood how it manages to not be too salty and how it manages to not be too acidic. And I guess that's what we'll find out today. It, in my mind, this defies a lot of my principles and fundamentals, and I'm just really curious how it'll do its thing. That's the part I really want to know about. So, we'll just see what happens, I guess. Not to like overplay it, but it is just so new to me. Adobo is so silly, it is, isn't it? And then, one cup of that to an entire cup of vinegar. I don't know if you guys know, but that is a lot of vinegar. This is cane vinegar, right? This isn't regular like white vinegar. This is Filipino cane vinegar. The Datu Puti brand. This is the one that I was recommended by every Filipino person in my life to use. And that is almost all of the prep. And then the only thing else that we really have left as a component is gonna be some sugar. But um, I actually don't know how much sugar we need to use because that might just be a little bit variable. Um, is that really it? That might just be it. Also, thank you so much for the sub. Hello, Jackie. It's lovely to see you. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. And then the only thing we're going to need to do, we're going to need to chop up some garlic as well. We no longer need a measuring cup for anything. We'll also put the sugar directly into this. And I did forget, is this stock that I have salted? I did want to do the chicken uh, adobo in, so, uh, in stock and not water, just to get like a little bit of extra flavor out of it. It is unfortunately salted, so I might actually just do water instead because I really don't want to mess with the salt proportions in this dish. So that's just not gonna happen, which is fine. Okay, in which case, 
We'll put this on a nice little plate for us. And we'll do a couple of spoons of sugar and then we will adjust as needed, depending on how this goes. It is going well, thank you. So we'll do one, two big spoonfuls of sugar. I'd ideally not like to do too much. We'll just see how this goes. And that will be poured in later, at a later time, once we actually need it. And then the bay leaves will be added at the same time, so I may as well just throw in some bay leaves at this stage. So just throw in my bay leaves now. Great. It won't hurt it food to sit in the soy sauce and vinegar, it should be fine. And that is almost all of the prep that we needed to do for the chicken. The only thing that's left is we're going to cut up some garlic. Now, in most applications that I've actually seen this dish happen, it has only been crushed, like smashed whole garlic cloves, which is something that I don't love doing because I feel like it's a bit of a waste of garlic. So what I like to do is just mince it up and just use less garlic because garlic becomes a little bit more intense. And it's, you know, it's nice to pick them out when they're big pieces, but I'd rather just use less and just have smaller pieces of garlic and not waste 20 cloves to get the effect that two or three cloves would give you, right? So I'm not trying to do that. We're gonna do like, you know, four cloves of garlic in here, uh, five cloves, that kind of thing. And we'll just really finely mince it. How are we doing today, guys? This is, this is a little bit chill today, aren't you? Everybody's having a nice Friday night. I hope. Okay. Pop open the garlic out of its casing as much as I can. Hi, Ben Jackie. Love it. Can't get enough of it. Love that guy. And I like doing this over a bowl, of course, because these little tiny papery bits just get all over the place, don't they? And maybe one more. Yeah, because again, this is all going to be really, really finely minced up. Getting all the papery bits off of it, right? And then we'll smash it and peel it. Okay. Um, I will need some later on, though. I will need some later on. Okay, but now we'll just chop it up. Let's get my knife. Let's get my bench scraper up. Where's my bench scraper? Ah, it's over here, it's been tucked away. It's been hidden. So the idea is something along the lines of the chicken sous, then we add um, some of the black peppercorns and stuff. It fries up for a little bit. We add a mixture, we top it off with water, and that cooks for 30 minutes. And then flip it over, and then it cooks for another 30 minutes to reduce it. Okay, garlic smash. Just like this. In fact, we could actually probably just get started on the chicken because this is just me smashing and chopping up garlic. So let's just do that. Okay. Hmm, what shot should we use? Let's just do all. Let's just get everything at once. Let's ball. Let's do it. So, in a nice big heavy Dutch oven, my, my pride and joy, my favorite tool at the moment, we're going to go in. It's not nice to heat it up when it's totally naked. Go in with a bit of avocado oil. Just enough to kind of coat the bottom, right? You don't need too much oil. And any leftover oil I might just actually take out and use for the rice. It is Dutch oven time. Recovering from my booster, gonna order dinner because I have no energy. I feel like we have spoken on multiple occasions about you attempting to recover from a booster. This is such a common interaction for us to have at this point, which is really quite funny to think about. Okay, let's continue with the smashing of the garlic. Ugh. As we wait for the oil to get nice and hot. We're gonna seal off the chicken. We're gonna get some good, good, good color on it. We're gonna throw in the peppercorns. We're gonna smash up some, and we're gonna keep some whole, which I saw, um, and I think that would give us some nice dimensions of peppercorn. Okay, let's get back to peeling this bad boy. Oh, this one's pretty stuck on, isn't it? There she goes. Good job. Good boy. Off you go. Okay. That one is so tiny, I don't even bother with it. Sweet. Comes off just like that. 
Nice. That is all of the garlic that we need. And now, let's take a nice napkin. I like having a wet napkin. Everybody, new booster dropped. Who wants it? Ooh, me, 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 me. Ah, okay, oil is heating up nicely. Now let's get the butts off. This one doesn't have any butt attached to it. Hello, Cammy. Hope you're having a beautiful day today. Okay. Sweet. Now let's just keep smashing. That should be enough to give us a little head start. And then I'm just going to go through this a couple times. Use the full extent of my knife if possible, but it is also garlic, so it's just gonna be fine. No matter what you do to it, it it'll work out, I promise. But yeah, I would much rather just have four or five garlic cloves that are gonna be pretty finely chopped instead of having 20, you know, fucking garlic cloves. Well, not finely chopped. I think what we go, oh God, I almost did a rock chop out of instinct. God, I hate doing that. It's only like decent for garlic, really. Um, we might just do it chunky like this, cause it's not gonna be that much liquid in the pot, is it? No, it won't. So this will just be fine. Okay, sweet. Look at that. I think that's fine. That's a fine texture for what I'm looking for. I could have just used less garlic and then chopped it up a little bit more is my thought at the moment. Okay. Sweet. Let's get some garlic back in here. Boop. How's my oil doing? It's not really even begun to smoke yet. Once again, it is pretty essential with a Dutch oven that you're not cranking up the heat, right? You don't want the fire to sort of escape over the sides. Also, hello, blue -o. Hello, hello, hello. Hope you're having a beautiful day today. You don't want to crank up the heat. You don't want it to go over the side. So it's better just to have it heat up pretty slow and steady. Like you see this? That's crazy. We shouldn't do that. Something like this is fine. I'll be fine. I do wish I had maybe a bit of a lower shot that would allow us to see how big the flame is, but that might just be for the future, wouldn't it? Yeah, just get my oil moving around. And we might have to do two batches of the chicken just to make sure it gets like a proper seal. And then the only other thing that we have to do left, excuse me, for it, we're going to grind up some peppercorns nice and fresh in a mortar and pestle. We're going to do some peppercorns whole and we're gonna do some ground like this because I think it'll be nice. And I saw J. Kenji Lopez all do it that way. And it's going to cook up a little bit too, so. Don't worry about me not toasting it beforehand. It'll fry in some of the chicken fat. I could have just used my pepper mill, but this is a lot more fun, isn't it? Ah. So far, everything has gone pretty according to plan. I struggled with butchering my chicken compared to usual, but that's just kind of fine. It's not a huge deal. I got over it pretty fast. Everything has just been smooth sailing. This is a very simple day. Um, and the order of operations at the moment, we'll get started with the chicken cooking. Once the chicken is simmering away, we'll begin the rice soaking, um, which needs to soak for 30 minutes and then cook for 15. And then everything is just gonna be kind of done what it needs to be from that point. And then the last thing we'll do, we'll do the cucumber salad in between everything. Okay, so that's a fine amount of ground black pepper. It's super, super finely ground. And now the oil is smoking. It's getting pretty hot at the moment. Let's go to the other cam. Let's go to the stove shot. Oh, hi. Let's get this going. And it is a Dutch oven. It is pretty heavy. It's going to retain quite a bit of heat. Ah, I see. Do I just fit all of this? Is that what happens? 
Uh, am I going to be able to fit all of it? Please tell me I can. This is a little bit more crowded than I would like, but it's just going to be fine. I think it's just going to be fine. It'll be good. It'll be fine. I'll keep the sheet train. We'll put the chicken back on it after it cooks. It'll be fine. I promise. Um, the reason that I'm doing that is just so that I save space. It's still going to cook and stew, so it'll go back on the contaminated sheet tray. And it'll be fine. Got a nice, good crust on it. Only thing I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna pour the oil back around the sides, just like this. Great. Gonna make sure that my garnishes are also ready. Get my black peppercorns out. We'll have that much go inside. And then I also have my soy sauce mixture, right? This is what's just gonna go inside. It's pretty nice. So once again, we have a cup of the vinegar. We have a couple spoons of sugar. We have a cup of the Filipino soy sauce. We have some of the garlic and we have some of the peppercorns. And then additionally, we also have the ground up peppercorns. It is a whole show. That is what I'm trying to do here. Okay. Let's get the ground black pepper out and ready to go. We'll just take it out of this vessel. Just leaving the chicken alone as long as possible. It's gonna naturally unstick. That's not an issue for us. And the reason I want to do this on a plate is because it just looks really pretty. Um, I'm not actually the best with making things for the first time because I feel like this is one where not a lot of my theory and fundamentals actually get put across. Yeah, I'm able to debone something and be able to grind up spices, but the reason why I'm a little bit nervous about this is because I've just never really made Filipino food. This is not something that is necessarily within my lexicon of using this much vinegar in a dish. So. I do like doing new things, but I don't like it when it is something that is completely and totally new that I'm just not prepared to deal with, especially teach. I felt comfortable doing this because this is still somewhat aligned for my skill set, but this does have genuinely a good amount of new concepts for myself. So I'm just actually interested to see how this goes. Okay, I can put this away. Now we'll take a good little look at how the chicken is doing. Let's go take a look. Um, I accidentally switched to the wrong camera again. I'm sorry for all the flubs, it's been a little bit. Okay, it's getting pretty golden, but it's not getting seared seared yet. So this is still gonna need some more time. It's still sticking to the pan, and it's fine if it sticks. It's all gonna get deglazed anyways. Yeah. Okay, it's all cooking, it's all looking good. We'll just keep sealing it off for the moment. Seems like you're off to a good start. Chicken adobo is fairly simple. It is fairly simple, isn't it? That is the realization I'm coming to about this dish. But let's also talk about something else in the meantime. Let's talk about my rice. That's the part I'm actually kind of excited about as well. So, as you guys may know, a recent thing that I've been doing, I've been using exclusively high good rice. And the reason I've been using exclusively high good rice is because in a nutritional standpoint, white rice is just kind of nothing but carbs. This has a little bit of the original dietary fiber and I don't care about the rest of the nutritional value. But point is, you know, this is somewhere in between a white rice and a brown rice, right? Where it's like uh, brown rice has the grain itself, it has the germ and it has the bran around it. This has the bran polished off, but it keeps the germ intact. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a chicken stock rice out of it with some shallots and garlic as well. And it's gonna be really, really tasty. It's gonna be awesome. Um, so I'm just trying to essentially see if I can get white rice out of my diet for no reason other than it's nice to have an ingredient that is not processed in a way where stuff is lost. Because white rice is essentially, you know, all of the germ and the bran gets polished off and it's missing. And so the high grade rice is a little bit closer to just having more of the intact grain without having like the mealy bran. I don't love brown rice, I don't love the texture. Garlic rice and chicken adobo, you're making the Philippines proud, great. But this isn't garlic fried rice. 
I was, it is to my understanding that the garlic fried rice would be the most traditional accompaniment here. This is just a garlic chicken rice, which I think is also pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening here. Um, let's go back to the stove shop. Get some water as well. We'll just keep checking on the chicken, make sure it doesn't burn on the bottom. Oh yeah, it's getting really, really nice and good color on the bottom. We can still leave it in a little bit longer. And what we'll actually do, we will take out a bit of that oil. Mmm. I'm noticing something about this Dutch oven. It is so wide that the wide part isn't actually heating as much as everything else. Holy bread rice helps show, uh, slow a blood sugar spike, but alas, it does not. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Yeah, that's a good color. That's pretty good. The chicken is almost frying in there. That's awesome. Might have still been a little bit too wet when I put it in, considering this amount of splashing. Yeah, this one is kind of stuck to the side. It's slowly chill, it'll all deglaze. That's telling me that that side is colder. And we'll strain off the oil. We'll take out the oil, and I'm gonna use that for the rice. So it's like the avocado oil that's infused with some of the chicken fat as well. And I'm going to fry off the shallots. I'm gonna super finely mince up a shallot, finely mince some garlic for the rice, cook it in that, and then I'll add the rice and the chicken stock, and that's gonna be the perfect chicken rice. Um, just give it more time. The answer is give it more time. Because um, the way cast iron heats, which is pretty important to understand and remember, is it has hot spots, right? If you were to crank up the heat on a cast iron, after the three, four minutes of heating up, it has a lot of hot spots exactly where like the flame would be hitting it. And so what you need to actually be doing is heating it up on a lower heat over a longer period of time, because to my understanding that it diffuses over the metal a little bit more evenly. That's why a lot of people suggest heating up, let's say you had a basic cast iron pan in the oven and then taking it out because it doesn't have those fire hot spots. That is not possible with a Dutch oven with an enamel coating because it's pretty bad form for um, you to heat up anything with an enamel coating without anything inside of it. So in this case, I should have just done a lower heat for a longer period of time. Don't pop at me. Who the fuck do you think you are? Chill out. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Sorry. I had to tell it what's up. I had to tell the chicken what's up. And then all we're gonna do after. Garlic, black pepper coins, black pepper. In fact, I'll just show you on the other camera. We have our soy sauce and we have our bay leaves. We have our sugar and we have our vinegar. We're gonna fry up the garlic and the pepper coins so it's not just going in raw, so it toasts up just a little bit. We'll leave some fat in, of course. Um, and then we'll just go in with everything else. Also, cl uh, classic banana milk. Thank you so much for the sub. It is lovely to see banana milk. Hello, hello, hello. Guys, normally I would never tell people to sub, but if you sub, look at the emotes that you get, huh? Don't you want them? Don't you want your big boy emotes? You should sub. Sorry, that's enough shilling for the moment. Uh, let's go back to the stove shop. Hydrate. Oh, thank you. That's quite helpful, isn't it? A good reminder, because I haven't done that in a while. Very tempted to sub. Well, there we go. It's a tantalizing offer, isn't it? I'm so thankful for this email. Thank you. The inspiration was Alphonse Face in Full Metal Alchemist. Okay? Alphonse Face in, in Full Metal Alchemist, when he does like that fucking OO shit, that's what I got done on Gengar. That's with my exact source of inspiration. Oh yeah, all right, we're getting a little bit of fawn development. That's good. We can probably get an even harder seal on the chicken. It's still not totally unstuck, but the skin has a really, really good color on it. It's getting like really nice and golden. Um, and then after, we'll take the chicken out, we'll throw in the garlic and the black pepper, let that toast for a second, and then we'll go in with the soy sauce and the bay leaves. So I'm just gonna prep where everything is gonna be moving to, right? So, always plan out your moves and your motions. The soy sauce and stuff is just gonna be over here. Cause I'm gonna need that in like soon after. Just chilling over here. Ugh, you guys can't see it, 
That's annoying. Just like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and get my sheet tray because this is where we'll take the chicken out after it cooks. It's gonna go back in, it's gonna cook. Don't worry about cross-contamination, guys. It's fine, I promise. That's where the chicken's gonna go. I'm gonna just get this out of the way in the meantime. And then we just wait. We wait until we're confident about the amount of color that we've obtained. That's a pretty good sear. It's pretty good. We could just push it freely, is my understanding. Yeah, let's get a little bit darker color on it. Just a touch more, and then I'll be good. And then we'll also, I'm trying to figure out what the best tool for the job is. Maybe a ladle. With this ladle, we're going to scoop out the oil and we're gonna put it in a different container. Scoop out the oil, put it in a different container. Also, it's going pretty good. Chicken's going awesome. It's cooking along, it's getting a lot of color on it. We'll scoop out the oil and then we'll use that for the rice. And the rice is gonna be infused with the flavor of all that chicken. It's gonna be delicious. Okay, I am confident in the amount of sioux that we have developed in this amount of time. Let's go ahead and take everything out. Because guys, once again, remember this. You don't necessarily need super high heat to get a sear. Sometimes you can just do a medium heat over a longer period of time, okay? Beautiful. We've got good foam development. It just splashed in my eye. I'm gonna pretend like that didn't sting. It definitely did sting. We'll wait for all the water to cook out. So as soon as it stops splashing on me, God, the audacity of this thing, I'm going to actually kill it. Okay. Waiting for all, the, for all the oil to stop splashing around. That's how we know, right? Uh, I need a towel, that's what I need. I need a kitchen towel, because it's gonna be hot. Okay, I have acquired and obtained my towel. Beautiful. Let's get my bowl actually set up over here so that I can just immediately ladle it inside. I should have really patted the chicken dry a little bit more. I could have been like really up in there and I didn't do that, which is kind of on me. Okay, we'll get a lot of that oil off. Yep, that's perfect. That's just going to go towards the rice. We, we can leave some of it just so we can toast up the um, garlic and stuff. But at the moment, that looks pretty good to me. And we'll get another bit. That's the perfect amount for the rice. That's going to be great. All of that. Again, it's not purely chicken fat, but it has a good amount in it. It has a, just a good amount of avocado oil as well. Right, this bad boy. Right here. Sweet. Now, let's grab a, now we can just do the tongue still. That's fine. Also, whoa, thank you so much for the raid. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, let's get the garlic and the black pepper and the ground black pepper in as well. Because we have ground black pepper, we don't want to have this in for too long. We just want to fry this up for a second. And then we are going to go in, just for a second, just for a moment's time. You really do not want to singe your garlic or your black pepper. It's smoking, and that is more than enough time for me to understand it's the glazing time, baby. All of that goes right in. Ah. Oh shit, I left all the sugar at the bottom. Oh no. The sugar kind of needs to go in. I realize it didn't mix around or dissolve it. Okay, lovely. Get all of that in there. Great. Hello, chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the for the raid. Let me see what this is. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Follow-up question, repreheating cast iron. After heating it up in a low temp, do you generally turn up the heat? No. So here's the thing, you know what the beauty of cast iron is? Because it is so thick, it will hold on to that heat for a while, which is the main benefit of cast iron. Cast iron doesn't heat evenly. Okay, the one that heats evenly is always gonna be copper. Copper is a very, very big even heater. But cast iron, cast iron not so much. So cast iron you have to do low and slow heating, but even if the pan gets quite cold, with enough time, I promise you that it just gets, you can put anything cold in it and it won't significantly or dramatically drop the temperature in any shape or form. Which is, I think, pretty sick. I think that's pretty cool. If you would ask a little guy like me. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put some stuff away at the moment. 
just so that we're keeping the station nice and organized. We're gonna add back our chicken. Add all of it in. And again, the chicken's barely salted because this is quite literally submerged in soy sauce. It is going to be exceptionally salty if we let it be that way. Perfect. I'm not forgetting any components. I think this is everything. I really could have done this with the wings, but I would have had to cook it in two batches, which would have been a bit of a hassle, wouldn't have. Okay, sweet. That definitely is pretty sick. Thank you, chef, of course. So guys, take a look. Also guys, welcome. By the way, once again, thank you so much for the grade. Really appreciate it, Jazz Bread. Are you also cooking extremely? We gotta top this off with water. That's what needs to happen now. And I gotta scrape on the bottom just to double check that everything is as deglazed as it could be. So top it off, this much should be fine. We're going to reduce it at the end. We're just making sure it cooks evenly now and it doesn't burn, right? That's why we need to top it off with the water, even if we'll be taking it out later. It's just a temporary buffer for ourselves is my understanding of it. Okay, good stuff. Scrape all the stuff off, off the bottom. It's got a bunch of bay leaves, black pepper, it's got the vinegar, it has water, it has some sugar. Not a lot of spices. I think next time I might wanna to try to do this with some chilies. But again, this is my first time making adobo. I'm not messing around. I'm not doing anything crazy that I normally wouldn't. All I'm going to do now, I'm just going to grab another kosu plate because I've already kind of contaminated these last few. Sweet. And then we'll go ahead and grab my lid. What's up, Dario? One of my favorite Smash commentators. Michelle's politics frogs, but they also love food. Well, you know what? Welcome. It's lovely to have you. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna crank up the heat. Thank you, by the way. That's very, very sweet of you. Thanks for being here. Okay, sweet. Guess what? We did a lot of the stuff that we needed to just now. The idea is this. We bring it up to a boil, drop it to a simmer, and then you guessed it, we just let it simmer for a little bit. That's all that there is to it. Now, the next step, very important. We'll get on with our lives. I'll put this thing away. Put this bad boy away and into my dishwasher. Because, once again, just keeping organized throughout the process is the most important thing that you could possibly do as a cook. It is just actually essential. Uh, there we go, good boy. Yeah, get inside. Who, the, who put nonstick pans in a dishwasher? Was it my mom? Oh, I'm upset. It's fine. It's fine, I'm not upset about it, it's fine. That's just not happening. It wouldn't be me. I would never do such a thing. Even if they're like shitty fucking Cathalon on sticks, I would never do that to them, would I? Okay, this angle needs to come down a little bit lower. Aha, and it's been shut. Good. Got a gun, but thank you for streaming. Excited to see how dark, uh, how, how dank, dank chicken gets. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Okay. Now, my friends, it is time for us to soak the rice. Oh shit, what is you? Jesus. <laughs> Everything just fell at once. How's this doing? Is this boiling yet? No, not quite. Okay, my friends, let's soak the rice. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. I'm gonna show you guys a little tip. I'm going to do everything in this one saucepan that you're seeing here, okay? But I already have my rice that I've washed and I've been draining sitting in this bowl the whole time. But how do I know how much liquid I'm going to use, okay, if I'm going to be using this saucepan for something else and I need to soak the rice beforehand, what am I gonna do? I'm going to measure the amount of water that I need in the saucepan itself. Okay, let's just switch over to our other feed just to show this off. This is something I like doing. We're gonna measure it in this and then put it back in here because in the saucepan, um, this one, we're going to be also doing the shallots and the garlic, right? We'll chop that up, we'll cook it, it'll be good. So, all of this is just gonna go on in. I'm gonna get this out of the way for just a moment's time, then we'll let it soak. It's a lot of rice, as you can see. Some might say too much, but I would say no such thing. Okay, there it is, perfect. And now, we'll be able to portion out the liquid. So this has been rinsed. My multiple camera angles are insane. Thank you, I appreciate it. I try very hard for the setup. 
Now, we will be portioning this with some chicken stock, right? Because I want to make chicken noodles. And once again, we're looking for a little bit over the top. That is our indicator of how much water we're going to need. It's a little bit gross to get your hand in chicken stock. Hello, unoriginal. That is not a name that I've seen in a long time. Oh my God, how are you doing? So, we're looking for just a little bit on top. Maybe a touch more water. You see that much? That's about how much we're going to need. Because again, it was rinsed before, so it already soaked up some water. I, I would actually like to go more than less, but it already soaked up some water, so we don't need as much water as usual. It'll just be fine. I think it'll just work out. Okay. Also, we gotta quickly take a look at the chicken one more time. Because I can already hear it simmering away, can't I? I sure can. Look at this thing, huh? Looks pretty good, I think. So, as usual, take that, drop it down to a simmer. Gonna pop that lid back on, and it's going to be 30 minutes for this part, and then we flip over the chicken, and then we cook it another 30 minutes. And we wanna keep this lid pretty ajar. I'm actually just gonna give it one more stir through, just to make sure that nothing is burning at the bottom. Um, I think it'll just be good form for us to do that. Ah, shit. Come on. Wait, is there somebody calling me? No, don't call me right now. Nice, I got a like on Hinge. Let's go. Do I cook as hard as your tweets? Yes, I mean, I literally just cook, don't I? Okay, ah, up we go. Scrape up the bottom. Nothing is burning. Everything looks great. It smells fantastic. I will say the smell of like that cane vinegar just going away is really beautiful stuff. 10, 20, 30 minutes. And guess what? That is the same exact amount of time that the rice needs to soak, which I think is pretty cool. So we're gonna time it. Rice soaks for 30 minutes, and then uh, we flip over the chicken, cook it for another 30. Okay. Let's get back to this, shall we? Overhead. So, chicken stock is in here. We're gonna need that saucepan for when we make the, uh, the shallot garlic oil. It'll be good for us to do now. All of this is just gonna get poured on in. Boop, good boy. Get in there. And then we'll just scrape it up. I'll rinse my hand off, it'll be fine. I know my hand is in chicken stock. Yes, it kind of sucks. I'll get over it. And then we'll rinse out the pan. Okay, come on. It's, it's a wet piece of rice. It sticks. Such as like, also it is technically high good rice, right? So it takes on a little bit more water than your traditional rice, than your traditional white rice, that is. We're gonna this thing off. And we'll dry it off because we'll be drying up the shallots in this too. All right, 30 minutes starts now. The clock has already been set. It'll be good. It'll just be good. Ah, I'm excited. I think this will be really good. I, everything smells nice. Everything is gonna taste nice. All these flavors just work. I was kind of nervous doing a dish that I've never done before, but I've realized almost all of my anxiety came from the fact that I've never bought Filipino vinegar or soy sauce before. Everything else is pretty up my alley, isn't it? So let's get this thing out of here. No longer need this. And I will put away the rest of that chicken stock. Get him out of here. What's adobo? Adobo is a Filipino dish of chicken that is cooked in soy sauce and vinegar. This is the first cooking stream that I've watched, pretty entertaining. Thank you. That is a very sweet compliment for you to give. I try my best. Ah. Okay. Also guys, once again, I cannot stress this enough. Please, for the dear love of God, clean as you go and your life is going to be significantly easier. I'm putting away things in the dishwasher. Is it unsightly on camera? Yes. But this is not a fucking studio kitchen. I am in my home. Have I had somebody not like your cooking? Yes, I have. We don't talk about who. But um, have I ever had somebody actively dislike it? Not because of something that I've made, but because of texture issues that they've had with things where they're like, I can't stand tomatoes or something. And they tell me that beforehand. And then I make something with tomatoes and then they hate it still. Um, and maybe people hated my cooking as a kid, I think, but that has not happened in recent time. I hope. I don't think it has. I don't think it has. Just cleaning off my station, 
getting myself nice and organized. Once again, we have the rice sitting here, soaking beautifully, right? Soaking in that chicken stock. This is where the chicken rice is also gonna come in. And guys, do not forget, under no circumstances, are you allowed to forget about this? You know what this is? This is some of the reserved chicken fat from when we cooked those legs and those thighs, okay? We don't need to add any additional oil. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be, it's, it's actually just gonna be amazing. So there's a lot of chicken flavor going into this chicken stock uh, that was made a few days ago. The chicken oil itself, it's going to complement the adobo super well. Um, and then we're also gonna make a smashed cucumber salad. That'll be the last thing that we do though. That'll be in the last 30 minute stretch of it cooking. We'll do that and have it sit out for a little bit. Okay, sweet, great. Um, let me sip some water, that's what I'll do. Mm. Let me just check on my adobo really quickly. Yeah, that's, that's cooking. Nice and a jolly lid, right? We wanna get rid of that liquid, and then for the last 30 minutes of cooking on a medium heat, we'll reduce it down even further. Okay, organize my station a little bit, get rid of my black peppercorns. This is also a nice time chat. How are we doing? I'm checking in with you guys. You guys doing good? Hanging out? You better be. I'm looking at you. You better be hanging out. Or I'll kill you. No, I would never do that. Can't say that. So, we have to make our seasoning for the rice. I wanted to do this uh, shallot garlic rice, right? And my idea is, my thinking at the moment, I'm going to do a fairly, fairly, super, super fine, 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 fine chop. And the reason why I want to do a super fine chop is because I kind of want it to melt, almost, in, um, in, the, in the rice. I don't want chunks of onion. I want to chop that shallot so finely that it essentially dissolves. And that is one of the things, by the way, that people get wrong about French sauces. Whenever they say, oh, finely mince a shallot to do this and then strain it out, the whole point, you mince the shallot so finely, so comically, tiny, pathetically small, that it just, all of its sweetness comes out into it. In this case, the structure and the size and your neatness of chopping it is really, really important. There are dishes where it's like, hey, you're gonna fucking boil this thing and then you're gonna blend it and puree it. It does not really matter how you cut it. In this case, in sauces, in time, enough. In this case, in, in, in sauces, in times where you want this onion to basically dissolve in a short amount of time, you have to get a super fine texture. Next. You also need a really, really sharp knife for this kind of a job, and I'm going to tell you why right now. If you had a dull knife and you tried to do a fine mince, you're not going to get a super fine mince. You're going to get smushed garlic because it's going to crush it on the way down, okay? You need a super fine knife that it can give you those really tiny, delicate cubes. You need those tiny, delicate cubes so that they hold their shape and they're able to get some color on it and not immediately release their moisture. Some things you can get away with cutting with a dull knife. In this case, you need a super sharp knife that keeps the onion intact so that it doesn't immediately release all of its water. Okay, and we're gonna show all that off now. We're gonna do all that now. We're gonna take our time with this. We don't have a rush. Everything is soaking for another 25 fucking minutes, you know? So it's actually just good. Um, what do we got? What did you say? Uh, let's say you got a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich from your bodega. Do you find yourself critiquing it or do I just enjoy it? Well, I'll put it to you this way. I will never judge something by standards that it was not created under. I will always judge things relative to the function that it is supposed to fulfill for me. I'm not going to get a bacon, egg and cheese and sit there and think to myself, oh, you know, this can be garnished with this and that and this needs this kind of a sauce. None of that. But I will take a bacon, egg and cheese from a bodega and I will judge it by the standards at which it was made. Is it cost efficient? Am I paying $5 in a, Fuck it, six dollars in a gentrified neighborhood, or am I paying four fifty, like four fifty, which is the cheap price now for it, right? Um, am I getting a good amount of eggs? Am I getting a good amount of cheese? Am I getting a good amount of bacon? The standards at which I judge it are how fresh is the Kaiser roll that it comes on. I don't get bacon, egg, and cheeses on fucking bagels. Okay, I get them only in Kaiser rolls. I judge it by, is the bacon too hard? Something that happens, bodegas at the beginning of the shift, they do several batches of bacon throughout. And some of the bacon that tends to be made a little bit too far in advance because it takes time to render it out, so they basically twice cook it, gets super chewy and leathery like beef jerky, 
which I hate. I cannot stand that. So I make sure that the bacon, you can't really get it crispy, but I don't want it to feel like beef jerky in my mouth. Um, and then, is there enough cheese to keep the thing moist? Oftentimes it might be a little bit too dry, and is the egg overcooked? If the egg is too overcooked, then it lacks the moisture that is needed. I always ask for it with sasson and hot sauce at my bodega. That's my additions and accompaniments. You love shoe leather bacon? Well, you know what? I'm a dog and I don't like chewing on it, okay? I want a sandwich. If it's a sandwich, it's in a sandwich form, you need to take a bite and not pull out a massive piece of bacon and chew on it and gnaw on it for 30 minutes. That should not happen under any circumstances. So that's why it needs to be crispy, okay? It needs to be crispy or at least fucking not chewy and leathery when it's in a sandwich. And if it is chewy and leathery, it has to be chopped into small pieces, it has to be chopped into small enough pieces that even if you do pull out that entire piece, then it's just fine. Okay, I'm very, very passionate about this because there's a lot of small things that can make a sandwich good, but yes, I do critique it. I critique it by those standards. I only critique things based on the standards of which it was made, okay? You cannot take something out of its original context and who made it at what function it is supposed to fulfill. The question is, how well does it serve its function? Does it come out fast? Does it, uh, is it cheap? And does it fulfill all of these needs? And in that case, it'll be a good bacon, egg, and cheese. No, 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 no. School caf cafeteria food was awful. It was miserable. American school cafeteria food is depressing. Um, there's like some really cool programs happening now uh, where like some professional chefs are going into it and trying to modernize it. But that's usually for charter or private schools that actually have the budget and it's not really publicly funded. Sometimes it is. Ah, American school cafeteria food is actually maybe the most depressing thing alive. And down south, they have fucking fast food inside of the high schools. It's crazy. It is insanity. All right, here's what's happening. Shallot time. Don't roll away, big boy. You're going to stay put. We have two small shallots, nice and rotund. We're going to slice this in half, just like this. We're going to clean up our station, and we're going to peel this over this. Square pizza. God, the, the, the bagel pizza, the square pizza. I mean, all of it. The cheese texture. Ugh. Ugh. It was terrible. It was so bad. I did always do that, too. Yeah. Every now and then they would have something decent, but it is honestly a failure of, of policy that that is the kind of food that we have. And that things like tomato sauce, this sweet sugary thing counts as like a vegetable. It's ridiculous. The amount that like corporations have had influence, okay, over the American uh, like lunch cafeteria system is ridiculous because they were just able to push their own products, push their own frozen products that meet their FDA guidelines and feed people quite literally trash. It sucks. Okay, shallots. These are pretty round shallots that I'm used to. Aren't they? They're pretty round. Um, I have some more garlic. Awesome. That's gonna be for the guys. So, let's get this bad boy. Now we're going to start finally, finally mincing it. I think I'm going to do my eighths method. This is going to take a while because we have a lot of onion to go through at the moment. A lot of shallots, excuse me. Darling, we should try Emily's. Eh, I have no reason to. So, incisions, just like this. Super, super delicate. Just like this. And now, my friends, watch what happens. One, two, three. Just like this. Go nice and slow and steady. Keep it all together as much as you can. Let's not waste any shallot. I don't really know if Emily's are going to be my thing. Because it's not very up my alley. Okay. My friends, this is actually not as fine as I could have gone. I can go even finer. This is still pretty big. Right? You're looking at that and you're like, Duran, how is that too big? Look at it. Those are still pretty sizable pieces. I want to mince this shallot. I want to mince it. I want it to look tiny. Oof, I'm crying a little bit more than usual. Wow, I really need to sharpen my knives, don't I? Oh no, guys, it's pretty difficult. It's not a fun realization to make. Whoa, we can go thinner. Yeah, I really, it's time to sharpen these bad boys. Now 
That's a little bit better. Uh, I do not know. I just really like having a cell tune. I'm not into this whole beverage pairing thing. I just like having a cell tune. I like having a tea on occasion. That's all. Having a nice wet towel just to wipe off my hands with each iteration will be actually quite nice for me. Taking my sweet old time once again, I really, really want to make sure that... Oh, hello guys. Why are we not totally evenly soaking? What's happening with you? Come on, good boy. I want to make sure that my hands aren't like too sticky or anything because I can get quite unfun over time. Okay, let's keep going. Super thin slices all the way through. Yeah, I'm getting quite anal about it because I just want this to be a perfect little shallot oil. You can also, you don't even necessarily need to cube it. You can just do like super thin slices on a mandolin. And I'm sure that would be good too. But then you'd still just get pieces. But the idea is just you want it to flavor the oil as much as you can. That's how you get the real intensity of the shallot. That's why so much French cuisine uses shallots and why people make, like, mess up when it comes to French cuisine. They cut through shallots way too big for all of their sauces and it's just not it. We might not need all of the shallot because again, it gets that intense when it is chopped this fine. Okay. Ooh, this one I'm not even gonna be able to do that with, am I? It's just falling together. Apply, okay, that's fine. Yeah, my knife is getting dull. I've been cutting some bone, haven't I? I think that's what's been happening. I think my chicken butchery has not been amazing lately. And as a result, my knives have been getting negatively impacted by it. Yeah, super, super fine. We'll do, this is called Dahlia takes vivants and chops a shallot, by the way. Prescribed, prescribed. Okay. We'll also check on how the chicken is doing because it's been cooking for 15 minutes. Whoa, that's already been 15 minutes of doing this. It's pretty sweet. Ah. Yeah, I'll take this to the shop and get these tuned up. Get them sharpened up. Okay. I do not need the rest of that shallot. I might just use it for the cucumber salad, honestly. That is what I'm thinking of at the moment. Okay. Let's take a look at time for the butter knife for butchering. Um, no, the petty knife is good for it. I wouldn't, I would like a boning knife at some point. That'd be nice. A boning knife might do me quite well. Okay. We'll take a look. What we got going on here? It just, it just needs to be sharpened. I've had this knife for a while. I haven't sharpened it in a while. I've, um, so it's just, it's just time to do the thing that it needs to do. What I do want to do though is take a proper knife sharpening class because I am too nervous to use like whetstones and stuff at home because I don't want to mess up my nice knives. I could practice with like a shitty one. That would be good. Okay guys, look at this fucking thing, huh? This looks delicious, doesn't it? That is a lot of liquid. We could probably turn up the temperature on this thing. Tilt that lid over, turn up the temperature, we'll let it boil off. But that chicken looks really nice. Okay. So, I'm trying to think. Um, okay, I'm going to give, I'm going to give the shallots a head start for the, uh, before the garlic. So, oil is gonna go into the pan. Let's actually just show you guys what that looks like. Ah, it doesn't show it. Okay, we'll just go here then. So, oil's going in. I should really get another angle on this stove, especially if I'm using just multiple burners. All right, all that oil's gonna go in. We're gonna nicely heat it up. We don't want this scorching hot. Oh, shit, what the fuck? Hello? That's... What, what is happening with you? Why are we missing some of the flames? 
I've never seen you do this before. Is it just wet? What is what is happening? I'm gonna hit it and maybe it'll just be fine. There you go. I hit it and then it's fine. Sweet. Okay, I'm just gonna get started on the garlic pretty quickly then. So, nice low heat. We'll low and slow heat up that oil. We don't wanna heat up too fast. We'll just get started on the garlic in the meantime as well. This will be a little bit faster about. Let's get that going. Get some cloves out. We're gonna need, actually I might just use a garlic press is what I'm thinking of. I will use a garlic press. We're going to do, what's it called? That's a bench scraper. It's typically and traditionally used for doughs and it's a bit more of a recent thing to use it for things that are not doughs. Okay, I'm gonna just use a garlic press is what I'm gonna do. Because I want, again, I want my garlic to like dissolve right in everything. I don't want massive pieces of garlic or anything. But in the meantime, I'm also just going to smash it up so we can peel the skin off. This one's skin is already off, it seems. One and two, perfect. Peel this bad boy. Sweet. Now we cut the butts off. And then we'll just prep it in our garlic press. That's gonna be great. I'm a big garlic press enjoyer, I have to say. Okay, so shallots into the chicken fat it goes. Let's get a nice little guy for this, shall we? Where's my little guy? Where's my favorite little wooden spoon? Where are you? I don't see you. Okay, I guess not. Maybe we'll just do a wooden spoon that's this big. Oh well. Yeah, nice low heat. That's what we want. We want to cook out the water in the shallot and get it just really, really soft. Mix it all together, all the way through, all that delicious, delicious chicken fat. And don't worry about seasoning it too much either. And I'm saying that because the adobo is gonna be super salty. That's where a lot of the salt in this is also going to come from, okay? So don't worry about seasoning this. It is so imperative that in a lot of like Asian cooking that you do not salt the rice because everything else seasons it after. It is the blank canvas. It is not necessarily a hard rule. You can do that in other places. And my chicken stock, I believe, has a little bit of salt in it. But the point of this is just to flavor it with the shallot. And you want enough oil to really, really submerge that shallot. It's going in there and we're basically making shallot oil. We're gonna toss in the garlic, it's gonna be great. Okay, let's quickly grab my garlic press and I'll get that ready for us. Where's my garlic press? Where's this bad boy? Where'd you go? I miss you. Hello? Ah, there you are. Sweet. We're just giving the shallots a bit of a head start because they'll burn a little bit after the garlic wood. Pop that out, get him back in. In he goes. One last one. Go inside. Oop, is that a bit of the skin? It is a bit of the skin. One last one. Salt, Old, old Bay, and cayenne pepper. Well, I'm not an Old Bay guy. I've never really understood Old Bay. You know what I think is a lot better? I think Tony's and I think Sason are essential. They are my pantry essentials. I could not go without them. Tony's and Sason are my lifeblood. Adobo is also fine. Not the same adobo, by the way. Just uh, used in both contexts, I forgot why. Okay, sweet. That's all that that needed. Nice and easy. And now, we gotta cut back on over to the shallots. We gotta make sure that none of that stuff is burning. Still pretty light color, but once again, consider the bottom is going to get burnt before the top does. It's getting a good amount of color on it. Yeah, it's a good thing we stirred it now. Super, super aromatic. And you can actually see, look how soft it's getting, right? Uh, That's what it's gonna look like. And we're gonna get that nice and golden by the end of it. This will be a good time for us to add the garlic, I will say. What are your thoughts on garlic powder compared to garlic? Um, 
the only time in my mind that I've ever been inclined to use garlic powder is when I am doing something like a dry rub for something. And it's just nice to have it in powdered form. But almost always, I would just prefer to use fresh garlic. They are innately, they, they do taste a little different. And you can use like garlic powder in like a very intense way if you rehydrate it in some water. It's just not my favorite thing to do. Just not my favorite. Okay, give this a nice mix around all the way through. And at this point, this is where it does have to be slightly babysat, right? Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be pretty good, actually. I'm quite excited about it. You wanna stir it often, it's garlic, it's shallots in there, it's in a bunch of oil. So even when you shut off the heat, it is going to continue to cook. We're not looking to get like crispy, garlic and shallots in there, but we're just looking to get some browning. And I can already tell you by the smell of it that that is browning garlic, even if it's this pale at the moment. Just constantly breaking it up, constantly moving it around, nice low heat. And you're waiting for the oil to separate from it. That's usually a really good sign. Oh, that looks delicious. And it smells amazing too. Oh, we're cooking onions and garlic. Oh, it smells good. We did the thing. We did the cooking stereotype, didn't we? A little bit longer and it'll almost be done. And then we'll go, we'll just kill the heat. And we'll let the residual heat cook the rest of it. It's a bunch of oil, it's in a pretty heavy bottom stainless steel uh, saucepan. Mmm, good stuff. Yeah, it's getting nice and golden, slowly but surely. Keep it moving, keep it mixing. I can smell how toasted it's getting, a little bit lower heat as well. Twitch smell of vision when? Oh God, I'm gonna do YouTube think. Oh, I wish you guys could smell it, follow my TikTok. Something like that. It does smell great. Mm. Oh shit, I will still need my garlic press, won't I? Ah, oh well, it's too late. I was gonna use it for my salad. Okay, this is just about done for my taste. Again, we don't want it to be too heavy in color because all that oil is gonna keep it cooking a little bit after. We'll give that like another couple of seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the place where you guys can get it done. Okay, wiping off my station a bit. I'm just going to set aside my shallots for another day. This is what I'm gonna do. No, I told you, I'm gonna use it for the salad. What am I saying? I'm just gonna finely, 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 thinly slice it for the uh, salad. All right, lovely. One last mix through, and that is perfect. That, my friends, is shallot and garlic cooked in oil until it is perfectly, perfectly golden. And we're just gonna keep moving it now so that we just cool it off. You see this thing? This has a lot of flavor. That's all gonna go into the rice. It's gonna give it a lot of sweetness. It's gonna give it a lot of aroma. And we're just mixing it around right now because we're whipping air into it to cool it off. That's all. The more you mix something, the more you blow on it, right? The more it cools off. Just try not to splash it on your floor. It's always a good idea. Okay. It's basically stopped sizzling. It's chilled out a little bit. And we're gonna make sure that it is fully, entirely, off the heat. And that is a shallot and garlic. And all we're gonna do, we're gonna wait a few more minutes, three more minutes to be exact. We're going to add in the rice that's soaked in all that chicken stock. We might actually leave some of the chicken stock behind. We're gonna add in the rice that's gonna cook for 15, bring it to a boil, drop to a simmer, close the lid, cook it for 15 minutes, and then mix it through and then it's done. And we will also be removing the lid off of the chicken as well. And while all of that is happening, we will be working on our salad. So. This is a good time to just chat with me. Hi, hello. Check it in. How are you guys liking today's stream? Thoughts, comments, concerns? Tyler, if I give you a pumpkin, what are you making with it? Oh man, I love roasted pumpkin soups. Love them, can't get enough of them. I feel like that's the thing that people most often default to, or just pumpkin purees. But that's what those kinds of vegetables are just so good at doing. Um, so keep it simple. You know, keep it simple, do the stuff that already works, 
and I feel like that won't be an issue. Put my bay leaves away. Good stream so far, Chef. Thank you, Classic Banana Milk. Appreciate it. Just checking on my, ooh, this continued to brown. Some of the edges even burnt a little bit. That's why it's important, once again. This thing will continue to cook. Garlic and shallots love burning, okay? But the oil is separated nicely. We're not gonna bother with toasting the rice or nothing. Don't worry about that. This was all just to get the flavor up and get some of that sweetness. Very much enjoying the stream while doing my homework. Well, thank you for being here. Okay, so next up, here's the order of operations. Once again, in two minutes, my timer is going to go off. That is when I'm going to flip the chicken, I'm going to take off the lid, and it is going to cook with the lid ajar, or off the lid so that we can reduce it and get a sauce at the bottom that's not just super, super liquidy, okay? Then we're going to think about the rice. We're going to add in the rice with the stock. We're gonna maybe pull back on some of the stock because it's kind of soaked for a while. Bring it to a boil drop, to a simmer. Cook it 15 minutes, take it off, mix it, put the lid back on and let it chill for five minutes. While all of that is happening, we will be working on a smashed cucumber salad. And for my smashed cucumber salad, we're going to first cucumber, smash it, chop it, salt it, let it sit. We're gonna slice up some of the shallot that I put away, which I'm silly about and I should not have done and mince up some garlic. And then we're gonna mix the cucumber um, through with some, with some vinegar and the shallot and the garlic. It'll be awesome. And now, the timer is about to go off. Let's look at the chicken. Let's have a, let's have a little peek, shall we? Uh, long shot. Boop. Okay, let's take a look. Come here, big boy. Ah, look at that. That has just been cooking and cooking and cooking this whole time. Let's set the timer for 30 minutes. I just put the lid away. Kitchen timer, 10, 20, 30. Just continue on this heat, is my thought. Oh, I should have been scraping down the side, shouldn't I have? Okay, let's give the chicken a flip. Make sure all of it is submerged, right? Because some of it has just been cooking on one side the whole time. That is what adobo should look like, right? Something like that. I might just Google a picture to make sure I'm on the right track. I really, really should have been scraping down the sides. That's the only thing. So soy sauce, again, really, really simple conceptually, right? I'm just going to scrape down all of this good stuff. Make sure none of that gets wasted. And I really should have done the wings in retrospect, but that's why we live and we learn on occasion. That's what I always, I've never said that in my life. We might actually do a slightly higher heat as well. But uh, yeah, another 30 minutes and the chicken's gonna get super, super tender. And then all of the sauce, we'll spoon it over. Well, that's really tasty. Oh, that's so good. Whoa, that is awesome. That's delicious, in fact. That's great. Pretty happy about that. We're gonna let that cook now. Now, for the rice, my friends. It's rice time. So, once again, we have our garlic and shallot. Right here. That's a lot of chicken. Are you sharing with anybody? Yes. My mom, and she also has a guest visiting for the weekend. So, it'll be all of us eating this. Um, all right. Now, we're gonna go in with the rice. It's all gonna go in. Oh, I'm gonna have to scrape all that off, won't I? Oh, that sucks. I hate doing that. This is a very well hydrated bit of rice. And again, I'm using the high rice, right? I'm not using traditional white rice. I wanted to use the high, oh shit, did I just drop my sesame oil? I did. Oh, this thing is too full. That's fine. That is totally okay. I think it'll be okay. Mix the shallots all the way through. Oh my God, I hope this thing does not overflow. If it does, that'll be really, really funny, but it won't be my problem. We'll just figure things out, won't we? This is the only stage that you can mix the rice. Once we get this thing going, we can't mix it anymore, okay? We can only do it when it's cold, so we don't break up the sides. Get all of the shallot, get all the garlic throughout. Make sure none of it is stuck to the bottom in little clumps. Evenly distribute it. 
right? They should get like an espresso tool for these, right? That'd be like a really nice way to go about this. This has the chicken stock. This has the chicken fat that the chicken cooked in. And it also has the garlic and shallot that we went out of our way to dissolve into this. This is going to have a lot of flavor and a lot of aroma. It has a lot to say, a lot of personality, this rice. But still preserving the fundamentals of um, not having it be too salty, right? Pretty essential in almost all like Asian like food cultures for the rice itself to be like the bland component. And then everything is gonna be served atop of that. Just gonna give this another scrape down the sides because those edges are a little burnt all the way throughout. Perfect. And we're just gonna reduce this thing. That's all that's gonna happen now. Okay. Alrighty guys, Woof. final stages of the operation. So here's the deal. I'm gonna rinse out this bowl. I need this bowl. We're gonna smash some cucumbers. I hope this does not make a mess. If it makes a mess, that'd be really funny. I think it will overflow. I don't think so. Chat, bets. A gentrified rice probably gonna have a little uh, wire massager in a rice tamper. Oh my God. But that would, that's a, that would be sick though, wouldn't it? That would just be sick. I think that would just be sick. Personally, that'd be pretty cool. Okay, here's the deal. Here's what's happening with the smashed cucumber salad. Oh shit, I need to get to my veg. I have another vegetable peeler. I do have another vegetable peeler. We're not gonna be de getting rid of all of the skin. We're only gonna be getting rid of some of the skin because too much skin and it's gonna just be unpleasant. IMO. Um, gotta keep a nice close eye on this thing. Make sure it does not bubble over. And if it does, I'm gonna blame all of you guys in chat. Okay, here's the deal. Here's what's happening. Let's get to an overhead shot yet again. Oh my god, I keep running out of Pokemon Lo-Fi. I've already been live for two hours. Holy shit. Well, almost. So, here's the deal. This isn't from the beginning, is it? There you go. Cucumbers, right over here. Nice and simple. First thing that we're gonna do, chop off the ends. Oh, hello. Bit of a hollow end on it. Don't wanna waste too much of it though. I have four cucumbers here. Hmm, in this shot, it would be nice to have a small stove shot. I could actually just probably throw that in, can't I? Next time. I'm not gonna bother with that now. Okay, sweet. Cucumbers right here. And now we have to figure something out. If this is going to make a mess when I smash it, I'm simply just going to get a bit of plastic wrap and put it over it. So, I'm gonna go down the sides. I'm gonna get rid of some of the peel. I don't love peeling my cucumbers, but in the salad genuinely does improve the texture significantly. There's also this little bit nasty bit here that we do have to unfortunately peel off. A little bit bruised. So, leaving some of the skin on, we'll see how this goes. Let's get a hammer. I'm taking smash quite literally. Well, you don't wanna hit it. Am I an idiot? No, you don't wanna hit it. We can just, Take a bench scraper and crush it down like this if you're strong enough. I did not crush that with as much force as I could have. What do I do with those crops? Trash! There we go, that's a little bit better. I should not have done this with a hammer. This would have just made a mess if I did that. So, here's the reason why Smash Cucumber Salad works. You get a really cool texture. You get a texture that absorbs the dressing that you put it in, and you get all of these different sized bits, and it's just good stuff. So, this worked out quite well. Chop that up into small chunks, just like that. And that is a start to the salad. We'll actually just go down lengthwise as well a couple times. The heterogeneity of this is nice. Mm. And it's gonna go into a bowl and be salted and sit with the salt and then we strain out the water. That'll season the salad and it'll stop us from having a wet one. Okay? So, cucumbers going into the bowl. Next one. Oh, I'm checking on the guys. Okay, it's fine. The adobo is a little bit too hot. I can just show you while I do that. Well, now that I did that, I don't really have to show off much else of the knife. We can just do the all shot. Hey Mason, what's going on? It's good to see you. Ah, the adobo's going great. Oh, that looks so good, dude. 
That's awesome. Also, whoa, uh, ciao, thank you so much for the sub. Much appreciated. Okay, the adobo is looking fantastic. We are just scraping down the sides often, making sure that nothing is burning on the edges. It's getting super, super tender. That is what adobo should look like. So I think I'm getting it down. Next, cucumber time. Peel. Just peel down some of the edges. We don't want that much peel on this thing, okay? Let's remember that. It's gonna make for a much nicer salad. And I really wanna get this done ASAP so that it can actually just properly sit. Doing soul food shava. Oh, that sounds amazing. Ah, nice crush there. Let's do that one more time. There she is. Good stuff. That's what I'm talking about. That is what that should look like. Now we'll just chop this up. Boop, 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 boop. Ah! Mm. I love cucumbers so much. Let's take a look. Aha! That is simulic, and nobody told me. This is what the guy should look like when we put a lid on. Okay, ready? I'm gonna get to the all shot again, uh, to the stove shot. Look, see that thing? That is simmering. Now, drop that heat, super, super tiny stuff. Let's just pat it down, make sure that the distribution is even. We're not mixing it at the stage. That is key, that is essential. Boop, that goes on, lid, and then we have already the timer exactly 21 minutes. So um, we'll see how long it takes. Back to this. And we'll also scrape down the edges while we're here. This is the only part that in my mind needs babysitting. Okay, sweet. I really wanna get the cucumbers on so we can sit with the salt properly. And that we'll have the time for it to just uh, both like infuse with the salt and get all the excess liquid out, right? That's the goal of the salt. It's less of seasoning and more of function in this case. I love doing that with tomatoes especially. And cucumber salads, if I'm doing like the cucumber that's going to sit for a while, it's a good move to get the excess water out, especially in a crushed form. So, cucumber. Ugh. Ugh. That's one, and then we give it a 90 degree turn, and then we just smash it back down, and then it is a smashed cucumber. And it burst seeds all over the place, and that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, nice. This is a cucumber that is full of seeds. Wow. I don't like wasting the seeds though. People are like, oh, do you see do cucumber? You're insane for that. The seeds have a negligible texture. It's like de-seeding a, 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 like a, you know, like a green squash, like a summer squash. It doesn't make any sense. We're de-seeding a tomato. God, that's the advice that I hate the most. Like, uh, I think for like, um, what's the French tuna salad called? Niçois? Something like that. You have to like poach the tomato and then peel the skin and then you take out the seeds and I just think that is crazy. Okay, that's the last of the crushing that we need to do. Make sure we just chop that down lengthwise. Crush that up, chop it up. And then we're going to toss this with some salt. It's gonna be great. And then we strain it off after. I don't have a v uh, count for how many times the dog has mentioned tomatoes this stream. Have I mentioned tomatoes this stream a lot? I didn't even notice if I did. Okay. Yeah, that's not overflowing. That looks good. This is boiling a little too hard though for my taste. This just needs to boil less hard. Come on, buddy. Okay. Ooh, I think the top of my rice might get, no, it's soaked enough. It won't be undercooked. Don't just trust the process. Lots of potatoes uh, that fall right off the bone. God, I love that video. I have not seen a reference to that video in quite some time. Also, apologies for the snipples. Still, the touch is the smallest bit sick. Okay, so, cucumbers. Bunch of salt's gonna go in because a lot of it is going to dissolve out, okay? This is where the main seasoning of the salad is. So, big, big, big pinches for the four cucumbers that we have. Make sure it's evenly tossed throughout. Shit, did I just get cucumbers all over my floor? Yes, it's because of the seeds. Oh my God, you bastard. What? No. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, you don't know that potatoes come with bones. Are you serious? Potatoes are living creatures. 
It's not an onion bit, it's a real thing, okay? I get the times. Okay, this mixed through. That's what needs to happen. This all needs to get nicely, nicely mixed through. I got cucumber seeds all over my floor. So that's fun. Mm. Nice and salty. And don't worry about it being too salty because it's all going to dissolve in the water, okay? And so it almost like self-regulates the amount that's in it. Okay, lovely. And now, let's see the rest of it. Oh, and I also wanted to just wipe this off, make sure this wasn't wet when we went in. Great. Let's give this another scrape down the sides. See how she's doing, she's doing good. We're gonna reduce this until it's a little thickened, yeah? I feel like that's the ideal adobo texture. You want this to be a pretty thick sauce. Maybe this just needs to reduce more. I've seen a video where a guy was using cornstarch in it and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. We're not doing that shit. I would like to avoid starch thickening with cornstarch if possible. Oh, that is delicious. It will definitely need some more sugar. No, that's great. Whoa, that's really tasty. What was that video? That was art, that's what that was. Okay, shallot time. For the salad, we'll keep it nice and pretty, shall we? Let's do, cut this into, what is that, sixteenths? No, eighths. And nice, thin slices all the way through. We'll actually have this sit with the vinegar that we'll be using. We'll do some of the Filipino vinegar and we'll do some sesame oil. That's gonna be the salad. Really, really simple stuff. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum. I think the shells will be a nice touch to this. Oh, I did not cut that into eighths. Oh well, it's fine. It's little slices of shallot. It'll be good no matter what we do to it. And I think uh, keeping it in just a little bit of vinegar for a bit is going to take out just a touch of that bite that the shallots have. I do wish I had some fresh chilies. That would have all just gone so well into the salad. That's all of the onions that we'll need. Ooh, the shallots, excuse me. Boop. All that's going on in. And then we'll also get the garlic in here. And then we'll have the garlic and the shallots sit with the vinegar and take out some of the bite. And that'll be almost all of the prep that we actually needed to do today. Did I get rid of my other garlic? Oh shit, that is overflowing. Remember when I said there was no way that the rice will overflow? Well, I might have made too much rice. It's fine. Um, it's not an issue. It'll all work out. It'll be okay. All right, that cucumber is releasing its liquid, isn't it? Yeah, the adobo is reducing beautifully. That looks, that looks amazing, in fact. And now, let's get the rest of my garlic out. I'm only going to need one clove at this point. Yeah, I've had pretty bad luck with that recently, haven't I? Okay, uh, smash that garlic clove as usual. Peel that bad boy. And I'm using the Filipino vinegar and not like Chinese black vinegar because we're just making a Filipino dish, so we may as well. Yeah, pink ego. This is all you and definitely not me at all. Okay, get that garlic going. This we do want pretty minced because this is going into a salad. It's going to be essentially raw, right? So you really want to be delicate with this part. I wonder how much I should actually have it be reduced. We'll see. Okay. Boop. All that goes in. Garlic goes into the shallot. And now the final step 
There's just going to be us putting uh, some vinegar into it. It'll be good. We've done, we've, this is like the first time I'm doing like three separate dishes on a stream, I think. And we still have quite some time to spare it, don't we? Okay, vinegar, I'm just gonna do like a spoonful. I'm not measuring or anything. Let's do one more spoonful, because I like nice acidic salads. Perfect. And it's just gonna sit with that for a little bit. Have a good time, chill out, hang out, that kind of deal. Gonna put this away for the moment. Keep that out. Ah. We could do a pinch of sugar in the salad for sweetness, but I would like to avoid that, considering we already did put sugar into, um, you know, this. Okay, so look at the cucumbers, right? We're letting it sit with all that salt, and then all of this liquid comes out of it as a result of us doing that. If I taste that, it's not over salted or anything. It's good. And then um, we're gonna let it sit for a couple more minutes. We're going to do what to it? At the very end, we'll just throw in the sesame oil. We'll strain this out, throw in the sesame oil, throw in the shallots, throw in the garlic, throw in the vinegar, and that'll be an amazing salad, I think. It's just gonna be good. Everything has almost been completed at the stage. Let's take another look at the adobo, shall we? There's a nice film of oil at the top, ooh. It's all reducing, it's all cooking down. The chicken is exceptionally tender at this point. It's breaking down even. We do want to keep it intact, right? We want pieces of chicken, not for it to totally fall apart on us. I'll give that another taste at the stage. See where it's at. Oh, that's good. Oh, that is really good. The bay leaves really come through surprisingly. That was not the taste that I was expecting to come through, but it did. Whoa, that's awesome. I really got like a nice kick of the bay leaves and the black pepper really comes out. That is tasty. That's pretty good stuff. Mmm, not bad, Ram guy. Not bad at all. Okay, I'm still gonna need this ladle for the film. Still a lot of tools that are gonna be in use for us here. Okay, just cleaning up my station, getting good at things. This is the final stage of it all, right? Because the rice is almost... Oh my God, oh, hi T. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, my little tea chant. Hello, tea girl. Sorry. Raid Shadow Legends. Ugh, that's right. Welcome. We're making adobo. It's almost done. Just tell it has to cook for like another 10 minutes. And then I also have some chicken rice going simultaneously. It's all gonna work out really nice. Yeah. Well, hello, welcome. How's your stream? Did you have a good stream? Have a good Friday. I'm glad you appreciate it. Not a lot of people understand my humor, okay? I'm not for, I'm not for the feeble mind to understand. I'm next level, baby, okay? I'm next fucking level. Sorry, I don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Is this a bit? Is this not a bit? I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay, ah, almost everything has been cleaned up. The cucumbers are sitting with the vinegar. Everything is almost done. Voice is still recovering from being sick. Yeah, everybody has been getting sick. I don't know what it is. I've been sick this week. It, might, it was not COVID, I tested negative. Life is a bit when you're a streamer, God. I am just like this, is the thing. I am just me. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Let's give that another mix through. Cause again, this has all of that stuff on the edges. I will say the adobo is a little fattier than I anticipated. I think that just might have been the nature of the chicken that I had. I wonder if I should have just done actually skinless. The skin probably helped to like give this a little bit of flavor, but it might have just not been worth it for the um, amount of fat that I'd have to strain out of it. That does look really good. Is adobo supposed to be thick is my question. I guess that's not one I have an immediate answer to. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, but does anybody does anybody know what's like the viscosity of adobo supposed to be like? Is it supposed to be like a glaze? No, it's like spoonable. 
Okay, we can also just take the chicken out and then continue to reduce it, is the thing. Okay? Mmm, that looks really good though. Yeah, that might just need a good deuce more. Ah. That's a lot of good flavor though. And that is actually surprisingly not as acidic as I thought it would be. And also, with that being said, is it supposed to be like thick? I don't know if I believe that. But we'll see. So, the guys should theoretically be done. This was a pretty, pretty tall batch of rice. We'll see how this thing came out. We'll take a look at this bad boy. The rice should be done, and now is a very important step, which is when we take it out, we mix it, right? And then we let it rest. Ah, I'll take this over here. Yeah, we'll just do this. Okay, get the lid away from us for just a second. We'll let that cool off. We'll set this up right here. Do I have a coaster? I do not have a coaster for it though. This is the chicken rice that we made. It has a shallot, it has the garlic. It's all cooked inside of the chicken stock. We're gonna take some chopsticks because of how full it is that we can't actually properly mix it around. That is a really nicely cooked thing of rice. I don't think that's too wet at all. That is steaming though. That is without a doubt steaming. And it smells like the stock. It smells like the garlic. It smells like the shallot. It just smells great. And it's the high glue rice, right? So again, it's still supposed to be delicate. It's not supposed to be overpoweringly flavorful. That's what the adobo liquid is for. But the rice still has something to say. It has a lot of aroma. It's very aromatic, but not intense in any shape or form. Ah, oh, that is lovely. That is a lovely batch of rice. Perfect stovetop rice every time when I do it. Look at that. That's a lot of rice. Holy shit. Ah, oh, and then like the next day, fried rice with this, that would be like... Mmm. Oh, that's lovely. That's actually really lovely. That has a lot of really pleasant tape flavor and aroma just coming through out of it. Okay, compact this thing, get it back inside. Let me just have a little taste. And that's just going to sit and rest after we mix it through. Mmm. That is, that is fucking delicious. It's so good. Again, it's not totally white rice. It's a high glue rice. So it has the germ intact. But more importantly, we cooked it in the stock. We made the shallot garlic oil to cook it in. Mm, that was really delicate. It was really delicate and still really aromatic. And that was exactly what I was shooting for with this. I was not shooting for something that was by any means um, like the super like intense fried rice or anything or like the super like intense paella. That's not what we're doing here. Okay. Now, let's go take another look at the adobo for a moment. Everything is just in its final stages now, which is pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. That's getting good. We'll just probably take this out onto a plate or something, is my thought. That is looking really, really tasty. We'll build ourselves a plate. Sweet. Let's talk about the cucumber salad in the meantime as well. That is looking really, really tasty. That looks really good. Let's, um, let's head back over to the cucumber salad that we have. So look at how much water has actually leached from this thing. Okay. All of that is liquid that would otherwise end up in a smashed cucumber salad, especially as it sits, because I've made enough for there to be some um, in the fridge. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to dump the cucumber water out. Keep that spoon actually, gonna need that. It's nicely seasoned throughout. And then you can literally see how much water it is actively outputting. I already strained off most of it. And all of this would normally go into a salad if this was properly seasoned. All of this water, which will just make it soggy. Okay, and we don't want that. It's gonna be, it's gonna have some sesame oil. It's gonna have the shallots. We're gonna already have a liquid in the form of the vinegar. So we want as little extra, uh, extra liquid as we can get. So, that's going, that's looking good. We can head back on over to the adobo. We can probably pull the chicken off of it. That looks really tasty. We can also drop that heat ever so slightly. Let's pull the chicken. And have that just finish reducing on its own. Okay. The chicken 
is probably falling apart at this stage, right? It is just super, super tender. It's been cooking well over an hour at this point, if we include like the searing time. And chicken already just cooks so quickly, right? So braising it, you really don't need hours on end like you would any other piece of meat. Let's take all that out. Has some black peppercorns nestled in there. You gotta be careful. Come on, big boy. Who's a good boy? Out we go. And then we'll just taste that and see what it needs. I think that's just gonna be the play for us. Ah, that's the stuff. Was that just a big chunk of chicken still? Oh, a couple of pieces of chicken that just ended up falling off. Okay, lovely. I guess I can also take the chicken skin with this. Yeah, this is why I wasn't actually too confident about the chicken skin in this thing. My friends, that is a lovely, lovely adobo, isn't it? That looks pretty good. <laughs> okay. Now, we'll go back on over to this. We'll scrape down all of this yet again. Oh, that's good. Yeah, no, that is like syrupy at the bottom. That is a really good texture that it has at the moment. I think we might actually just kill it. Just kill it now. I can already see it bubble away. That is perfect. I can see the texture that it has. That might just be ideal, because this is all gonna get spooned over rice. Isn't it? It looks really good. Oh, that's so good. I'm very, very happy about how that came out. Okay. Oof. It's still simmering away because of the residual heat that is in a Dutch oven, of course. That's just part of the job. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. That is not as nearly acidic as I thought it would be. In fact, if anything, it's a little bit too much soy sauce. I should have followed the original proportion, which is two thirds of a cup of soy sauce to the one cup vinegar. That is not nearly as acidic as I thought it would be. That is crazy. That is mind blowing to me. Wow. Okay. I did not expect that outcome at all. That is so cool. Okay, my friends. Cucumber, look how much more liquid has released the cucumber dimension, has escaped the cucumber dimension, excuse me. Pull all that out yet again. Just trying to get as good of as, as much liquid as possible. Okay? It's a salad. It cannot be dripping and soaking wet. It has to be moist. Mmm. That's a nicely seasoned cucumber. Sitting it with the salt, once again, both functional and food taste as well. It does both. Get you a Google who does both. Okay. And now, my friends, I do believe we can begin to plate, can't we? Yeah, I believe so. My favorite voice to show up when I'm watching Smash Clips. Aw, oh, thank you. That's very, very sweet of you. I appreciate it. Okay, my friends. So, here's the deal. This cucumber salad, we have to finish before we proceed with anything else that we have going on. This bowl is mostly dry. It's not dripping that much more water anymore. We'll get rid of the last of it. And then we'll go in with our cucumbers. We got rid of a lot of excess liquid, right? Very, very important stuff that we did that. Now, we will go in with our garlic and the vinegar. That was just all there and hanging out. Let's just go to this sh uh, shot really quick. And we'll get a device to mix that for us, won't we? I'll just get a big spoon. That's what I'll do. Just a big eating spoon. Uh, okay, that's fine. Mix that all the way through. Cucumber, shallot, garlic, vinegar. Only broiled stuff you, you flavor, uh, your favorite. Well, thank you for being here. Okay. This is good. Get the rest of that inside. And then we'll finish it off with some sesame oil. And that's just, that's it. The salad is really just that simple. That's all I wanted out of it. And normally this would be pretty dark in color. Ew, big spoon. This is just for us to mix. We're not eating with it. Normally we'd be using like Chinese black vinegar for this, but we're making a Filipino dish. Why not just use Filipino vinegar? It'll just be fine. 
Okay, that's how it's done. Mm. Delicious. Really yummy. Delicious, in fact. Wow. That's a really tasty salad. That's exactly what I wanted. Nicely seasoned, nice and acidic. It's got the taste of sesame oil through that. That's a salad. My friends, it is now finally time for us to plate. So, here's the deal. We're gonna do the thing. We're gonna do the funny thing, aren't we? We're going to go ahead and take a spoon and we're going to put some of the rice into a bowl and flip it over because it looks cute when you do that. I'm a, I'm a big, uh, it looks cute kind of guy. So let's do that. I got a bowl right here. We're gonna pack it full of rice. Right? This is our chicken rice. Once again, cooked in chicken stock, cooked with shallot, cooked with garlic. Very, very aromatic. It's delicious stuff. Get a nice couple big spoons of that. Shit, it is all over my table. I'm really annoyed about that, but I'm gonna try my best not to show it. Okay, pack that in. Get a nice flat surface on it. Mm. And once again, it also cooked in the chicken fat. Can't forget about that detail, okay? Set that aside. We have no more use for you. Pleb. Yeah, I threw that away. What do you mean? Can't have food that falls on the table. Okay, sweet. Wipe that off. Now it is time. So, gotta get a plate. Nice little plate for yourselves. Flip it over. We're doing the little cute shit, aren't we? All right. Boop, just like that. Then the adobo goes on. We'll give ourselves two pieces. Give ourselves a little thigh. Give ourselves a little leg action as well. Because I think it'll just be nice. Oh shit, should we just do more pieces? I'm not that hungry. You know what? It's fine. You guys don't judge me for it. This is not the plate I would give to somebody else. I'd give them like three pieces, but... It was a pretty lean bird, I have to say. And then, and then, my friends, finally, we finish it off with none other. In fact, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take all of the cooking liquid. Yes, I did, I'm sorry about that. Won't happen again, it will happen again. We're gonna take that, we're gonna strain that off into this container, that's what we'll do. I think that'll be cute, that'll be pretty cool. Ah, oh, that's too fucking big, isn't it? It'll be fine. It'll just work out, wouldn't it? Because I don't want any of the solids in there, I think. Yes, I know the strainer is way too big for the job. I'm very well aware of that. It's going to make a mess if I'm not careful. As it almost just did. I will strain off the rest of it later. At the moment, I just needed enough for me. That's kind of all I care about. Let's get that. Let's get my nice little spoon. Let's take this back. Now let's spoon that over. Ho 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 ho. For the rice as well. Looks really, really tasty. That might be enough. That might just be plenty. Well, we'll give it a couple more spoons. Mm. So fucking good. Whoa, that sauce is amazing. That sauce is really good. I'm really surprised. A little too much fat. I could have um, waited for it to like solidify or something and taken it off, because you really don't want it to break the sheen of it, but it does have some viscosity to it. This is great. Everybody, I think this is it. This is the adobo. I'll now Google references to make sure that I'm not too far off. I don't think aesthetically or visually I'm that far off. This looks like adobo, doesn't it? It's pretty good. It's pretty tasty. All right, my friends, cheers, huh? Let's have a little bite. Mmm. Oh, that is so pleasant. That is delicious. Oh, the chicken rice? With like the adobo sauce now? I'm very impressed. That is delicious. That is one of the tastiest things I've made. That is actually one of the tastiest things I've made in a while. 
And of course the chicken boils down so you can actually just cut it off with a spoon if you would like. Ignore that sound. Yeah, that is just delicious, isn't it? Mm. That is actually just delicious. I am so happy about that. Mm. You know what? The chicken is a little bit chewy. That whole chicken that I got from the Chinese grocery store, it is, it was like a little bit leaner. It was like a little bit bigger, but like the meat was thinner. And this meat is a little bit tougher, but it's great. It's got excellent flavor to it. That is actually really lovely. Mm. Dude, this rice fucks. With the adobo sauce, that is really good. That is delicious. That is one of the more delicious things I've made. I've not made Filipino food at home before. I've lived 20 long years, almost 21, without doing this at home. What is my issue? That is just great. That is really, really good stuff. Come on. Mm. Mm. Makes me really happy. Yeah, okay. In fact, everything just went fine, didn't it? I made a little bit of a mess. I'm gonna have to clean it up after. That was just delicious. Mm. You know, when I said it was a little bit too soy heavy. Oh, thank you so much for the $10 donation. Much appreciated. Mm. Dude. When I said it was too soy heavy, on its own it was too soy heavy. When it's like with the chicken, or like when it's with the rice, it just balances out. Mm. Oh fuck. Yeah, no, that's just really good. That is just excellent, in fact. And the chicken fat is fine, it just doesn't look visually appealing. It just soaks up into the rice, fine, but just doesn't look good on a plate. Mmm. Dude. Mmm. Mm hmm I think I got a couple of nice chickens for the job. I think that's what happened here, too. These chickens are really flavorful on their own, naturally. Like, the texture is great. They're super meaty. Mmm. Okay. Wow. You know what? Everything that I made on the stream was really delicious. This might be one of them the best. This might have been like a top three thing that I made on stream. The guys, the guys actually like, I don't know if you guys can tell. Look at the grain separation and the individuality on the rice. This is a chicken rice, nonetheless, and it is perfect in texture. Everything is intact. It has the flavor of the stock, it has this chicken fat in it, it has the shallot, and yet the texture is like actually perfect on it. It is great. And, and I'm using high grade rice too. I'm not using fucking white rice, dude. It has the germ intact in it too, and everything. Whoa. Mmm. This might just be a thing that I make often now. Mm. I would love this with chilies. Let's get some of the thigh as well. Ah. Mm. Delicious. Yeah, tougher than I'm used to, but it's fine. It's just got good chew to it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That's just a really flavorful piece of chicken. Okay, chap, this is the final part of the stream. Say something now or forever hold you peace. Questions, comments, concerns, anything that you want. 
Tell me now. Ah. Hmm. Very nice. Hmm. Thank you. Looks great. Thank you guys. Very sweet of you. You want a piece of that chicken? Yeah, I do too. That's why I'm gonna have one. Make it. Make it. Make the adobo. Everything that I did came out good. Only thing, use like a gravy strainer if you want to separate the fat from the uh, sauce. And then just use a chicken fat for something else later. That's great. Well, sweet. Get some thigh meat as well. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mmm. Just got a little bone. I am, I am, don't worry about it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is genuinely one of the most flavorful chickens I've made. I think a lot of that does come from the chicken that I got though. Mm. I don't. I don't like brownness. I don't like the texture as much. But this is high glue rice. This is in between. So my answer is throw it away and buy high glue rice instead. That's my answer to you. Ha. Mm. Mm. But if you had to, soak it, soak it for an hour beforehand, and then it'll cook in 30 minutes or so. Hmm. Soak it with like an inch of water above the top. Soak it, soak it, soak it, soak it. Saucepan, mm, bring it up to a boil, drop to a simmer. 30 minutes, I believe. Hmm. You have to soak it. That's good. Mm. Ah, okay, everybody. I'm eating the last few spoonfuls, and then we'll find somebody for us to eat. Mm. This was maybe one of the biggest successes I've had because I have done a couple of completely new things on stream. I applied my existing fundamentals and it went well. I tried to do one new thing once on stream and it went fucking awful in my mind. This on the other hand was, was excellent. This is just gonna go into rotation. Did you guys see how easy this was too? I had a couple of chickens, I deboned them, bam. Fucking sear it off, soy sauce, vinegar, sugar, bay leaf, black pepper, cook an hour, and then it, that's it. That is literally all that there is to it. And then with the rice, the rice is what makes this exceptional, I will say. That is the, 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 the hue of this. Mm, cause it soaks up the sauce. And the, and the rice is so flavorful from the sock and everything. Sunday, I'll see you Sunday. Maybe 3 p.m. or so? How's that sound? Chat, tell me what time Sunday would be good for you. If you're gonna be there, if you're gonna be present at the dollar stream. Great stream, hope the others enjoy the meal. I hope so too. Let's um, see who is live right now. Let's do that. All right. Hmm. I see Kai is live. We can read Kai. Let's read Kai. We'll do that. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Sorry it's been so long since the last one. Really appreciate having all of you. Um, yeah, this was nice to be able to come back to this. 
We made a really tasty thing. If you guys make this, just let me know. And yeah, we'll see you all next time. Sunday, 3 p.m. Sunday, Sunday. Hey, you're gonna be there, right? Great, awesome, awesome. All right, bye everybody. Mwah.